welcome everyone. <laughs> that's 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 that sounded very very dull and, and lifeless. Just like how I feel inside all the time. Anyway, uh, welcome, welcome to the Black Hawk Talk, Talk. Talk. And now, Black Hawk Talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the intros, the intros for the show never, never go smoothly. Is it like I say well, it? Well, you and never then... get a chance to they... finish. Them. You know what we need? We need a jingle. <laughs> we need it. We need a jingle so that this is the Black Hawk Talk. <laughs> <laughs> If we have a jingle, then this will be go so much smoother, and every time we can just yeah, I can have like just like a preset intro, then have it play all the time. Yes, we need a soundboard. That's what we need. <laughs> you need someone to sing it, though. Someone with a beautiful voice. Mm. We we need it. We need a what? This is the Black Hawk talk. Wait. All right, so. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> for, for, now for introductions. I hope. And then nothing else or to interrupt me. Um, yes, it is me, the Black Hawk God. I almost said Black Hawk Talk, even though that's the show and not my name or my username. Yes, I am Black Hawk God, or Wesley as my real name. And then we have Nyets or Ian. Hi. And then we have uh, we have <laughs> <laughs> we have Sam or Sark. Yep. Hello. And I'm then here. we have finally have someone different on the show. And we we we, 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 we have Crazy T also as Nick. Oh no. Wait. Did I say Crazy T? Because it's Crazy yeah. T with a K. <laughs> it's Crazy T with a K. That's how you know it's crazy. <laughs> exactly. I think Mortal Kombat did that ages ago. The key K is always cooler than the C. I see. Did they trademark that? Replacing C for a K? Yeah, I mean... You're in trouble, mate. <laughs> I don't think oh, you, you can... Yeah, I don't There's think you, you can copyright an alphabet. We started and someone's already <laughs> getting sued. <laughs> what a great start. Um, but yes, um, Nick um, is also like uh, one of our SCAD friends. We were, we were classmates as well. Um... Yeah. But he's in he's in Miami right now, right? I am in Miami right now. I came to Hong Kong for a year and now I have come back to Miami and I'm going to start school in Atlanta. Yes. Oh, oh. you're going to the Atlanta yeah. campus. Yeah. Well, f yeah, only for a only for a little time and you know, I'm going back to the main campus. Oh, I see. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I, I come back to Hong Kong the last year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this to everyone here, but um, what's, his, what's his name? I can't remember now. I'm having a mind blank. Vincent. Yes, Vincent will be coming oh, over right. in um, winter term. Oh, he's coming in winter? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Good. Yeah. I feel like yeah. people just can't get enough of this place. Yeah, Hong Kong is a really nice small town. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice enough to overlook all the pollution, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, so I think like one like this, this is why oh, I always want to do when um, whenever a different person, uh, a new person comes into the talk to the talk. Um, and you just like to introduce themselves, so that's an introduction. But I also like to uh, do username origins. So I I, I I don't think I ever heard Nick's username before. So where did Crazy T come from? Okay, so basically Crazy T came from ages ago when I used to play Minecraft. Oh. And um, I used to play Minecraft online and all of the um, those crazy servers, like the PvP servers and the uh, faction service and um, I used to play with my my good Asian friends and his username was um, crazy Jesus I don't know why I think he's I think he's really religious <laughs> maybe um, I don't know how, but, how can you tell but I, was like, I was like oh my god I should be like crazy crazy teeth right but I I missed out a few letters so it was just crazy T <laughs> a bit, bit simple, but 
Wait, what do you mean yeah, miss out? How did I miss out two letters? I have no idea. I think it was what? I missed out two letters and then I just started spelling it T E A. Because <laughs> because, because um, my origins, I am from England and we do drink a lot of tea. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I drink tea like almost every day, every morning. <laughs> so you gotta yeah. fulfill your stereotype. But, but Wesley, what tea do you drink? It's a very specific. Tea well, I have drink. So, I have some Marks and Spencers like tea bags and stuff. I, <laughs> what do you mean by what uh, so kind? Yeah, that that is very yeah because because in America they don't do very good tea. Yeah, they that's what I've heard. Black black tea and Earl's Grey. Oh. God, disgusting. Right? <laughs> we don't want any of that. But see, okay. We, in America, in America, there is no Marks and Spencers. I know. There is no Tesco's. There's no like all of those English shops. Um, so in England, we do we do English breakfast tea. Yes. You know, it's the, uh, best. the way I make my my English breakfast tea is I put a little bit of milk in, and then and then two sugars, and that's a perfect. Perfect hey, that's yeah. Tea. That's that's what I always grew up with. I always grew up with like some. You get the tea bag, a little bit of milk, and then two exactly. spoonfuls of sugar. Spoonfuls. Huh? Well, no, I, I don't know. I sugar cubes, whatever. <laughs> if I'm lazy. <laughs> well, um, Hong, Hong Kong is not the best place for healthy drinks as well, like how sugary the Fita lemon teas are, but. Uh, I guess they're better than. Oh. Um, I guess they're better than the American teas that you're uh, speaking of. Yeah, I mean, I never tried American American tea. Yeah, so me neither. I can't tell. I can't say anything. I I love Hong Kong drinks. My my favorite is that the um, the what's the one in the in the blue can? The one in the, the blue can. can? Oh, Bakari Sweat. Oh, Bakari oh Sweat. Oh my yeah. god. That, that's not hot. <laughs> <Yeah, that's... laughs> okay. I can't get that. I can't get that in America or anywhere else. Oh, nice. they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so. It's Japanese, huh? Yeah, it is. Huh, what a, okay, what a derail. <laughs> uh, but... So we do occasionally. Yeah, we do yeah, we occasionally. Talk about video games. Yeah, well, wow, we that, that's, that right that's, from the corruptional podcast. Yeah, that's corruptional podcast. Well, I was about to say that that's a cor that's corruptional podcast tagline. We we occasionally Ten, talk about yeah, video games, but that's Ten minutes line. in, and we are already getting sued. Wow, <laughs> twice. Sue for the K and then sue for the <laughs> okay. the tagline. Okay, no, okay, okay. Nobody say anything about Nintendo. Otherwise, we'll get sued. Oh gosh! Oh, no, you no. already said the name. <laughs> oh, How can you no. say the name? Oh my god, what have you done? I can't believe well, you've done this. This is going to be the final episode, I guess, of the Black Hawk yeah. Talk. We, we can't um, afford all the lawsuits. No, it's, it's been fun while it lasted. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, we're not going to go do the Gulag. <laughs> what? But how can we get sued if we never made money in the first place from this show? Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to plead guilty and vote for life then. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, because... like you're never gonna win against big big companies. No. Just, yeah, YouTube that's, so that, uh, that's how it works. Yes. Hours. Yeah. Anyway. That's, that's why we have to make our our own company, and then. And then yeah. get sued. <laughs> make get our company sued, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we then paying... declare that company bankrupt, and it wasn't. Oh, um... it's fine. Shell company, that's what they're for. Very good, very good. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, I mean, I was, yeah, I, 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 I wanted... What? I mean, no, I wanted, I wanted to say, like, um, well, I, first, first, I want to talk about, well, since, since we, we talked about Win Vincent, right? Um, yeah. I wanted to bring up his Kickstarter, right? Oh, yes. um... Space or not? So um, we made um, in um, ITGM one to one. We uh, we had like a assignment to the to design and make a board game, right? 
Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think uh, e- e- Ian and Sam were were a group. So yep. you guys want yep. to talk about your board games? Well, Holy shit. trademark, oh. right? Um, trademark, right? Uh, no one <laughs> who yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone no who listens to this podcast agrees to the terms and conditions that <laughs> no one will ever create a game under this title and use any of the ideas that we uh, hereby divulge. So uh, our game was called Lizards vs. Wizards. And totally original name. No one can use it. Like, yep. if you're listening to this podcast, you are agreeing to the terms just, and conditions. Just pull, pull that idea out of your head now. It's already been used. Yeah, Lizards vs. Wizards, uh, totally original card game where it's basically a um, you you are a wizard and you have to fight lizard. Yep. Yes. <laughs> we had so, shiny uh, shiny rocks for the yep. kids to follow. We had lots of cards for <laughs> you to get paper cuts on. It was yeah, a really uh, really compelling game. Yeah, I we wrote. Uh... <laughs> yeah, go on. You, you uh, I remember. I remember your game was a lot like, um, like a moving dungeon, wasn't it? It's like you had yep. to start from, um, from Level. pretty much nothing, and then go all the way to the boss. See, right. I think the professional term they use in the industry is uh, procedurally generated. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. W- yeah. So yeah. basically, we have three tiers <laughs> of dungeon that are represented by cards, and uh, they're encounter cards. So you shuffle the encounter cards deck from uh, level one to level three, and uh, you start drawing them. And we limited to five cards, I think it was, per level. And um, Hmm. each time an encounter happens, you basically have to resolve the encounter by card says. Yep. Um, We handled power in a way where uh, people could sort of quote unquote level up by collecting more uh, gems that's the sparkly bits that Sam was talking about great for kids to, to choke yep. on Choking and, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah but they were really pretty okay and uh, there are four <laughs> colors there's the uh, yeah <laughs> choking like, hands you're, you're but they're really pretty yeah. see when you yeah, play this game pretty. you also become the target of pickpockets it's an added bonus <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what we have are four co- different colored crystals, right? And these little crystals, well, they're plastic. We call them crystals anyway. And uh, there, there's the yellow crystal for earth, and then white crystal for air, and then red for fire, blue for water, right? Uh, and uh, you have special effects based on how you combine these crystals to cast a spell, and... Uh, you can stack up the same color to increase the spell's effectiveness and these crystals are consumed once you use them. So the power level is controlled by how many crystals you have on hand and you have to kind of manage how many crystals you spend in a fight. Yep. In the end it all became like a math game where you're trying to save up enough crystals to get a one shot on the final dragon. And basically, it all boiled down to how well you played your first, basically the first level. Like, the middle two levels are almost useless. Because if you <laughs> if you sail through the first level and the second and third, then they're basically going to be a breeze as well. But if you fail the first level, then no, like, you don't have to fail the first level. But if you're not doing well on the first level, you might as well restart because there's no way you're going to win. So, so do you we... have to, do you have to one shot the um, the boss the last boss or we designed no. the boss to have I mean... a lot of different skills so that technically you don't have to one shot the boss to win. But the most effective way is just to have one person hoard all the same colored gems and have him cast uh, overpowered spell spell to one shot the dragon. Yep. Which is fun, but it's also made the dragon skills kind of pointless. <laughs> All of that. Which is work. why, yeah. Feels Which bad. is why I'm kind of, I'm revamping it, and uh, I've talked to it a few times with Sam now. Where 
gonna make it into this exploration based game where there are actually tiles that you have to place and yep. uh, there but uh, I'm still working on that it's still trademarked oh. though just a reminder yeah totally trademarked we don't even have a name for the second drop yeah. it's not limited to the wizard it, is it gonna be like similar to the board game Doom Let's check that out. I don't. I've never played the board game Doom. <laughs> because, okay. because doesn't doesn't the board game Doom have like? Remember when our teacher? Um, oh I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, showed um, us. Yeah, yeah. I remember now. Um, not not Doom really. Board game. Yeah. Doom board game looks a bit like Dungeons and Dragons without all the dungeon. W without all yeah, the dragons. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Yeah, it's Dungeons so, and Dragons about the Dungeons and Dragons, and and it's demons and spaceships. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's not gonna be like that. Um, uh, my vision of it is that it's gonna be a hex-based game, and you start in the middle with a capital city, and uh, the tiles outside of the capital city are explored but unresolved, and then you need to move your heroes outside to find the. Demon Lord's castle and basically conquer it to win. Oh, and uh, be, be like be like Steve if you take the role of the scout in a way. Yeah, basically everyone's playing a sort of scout and exploring outward and uh, trying to find basically runes in Civ, I uh, you can say. Yeah. And, yeah, and uh, similar to how wizards and lizards work, we had. We have cards that you uh, that describe what each tile does when you explore them, and uh, you have to resolve these tiles to ca get them to count as explored. So, uh, like if you land on the Demon Lord's Castle tile, then you have to look at the Demon Lord's Castle card and see what you have to do to resolve this in order to conquer it. So, uh, there are like town tiles as well, and uh, it's more like a traditional RPG where if you hit the town, then you can hit the shop and upgrade your gear and uh, different encounters will give you gold and different resources and uh, you can learn skills and such. Hmm. So, so yeah, it's, it's become more of a board game RPG than, uh, than only an uh, exploration via cards game. Yeah. Yeah, like, it sounds like much it's a tabletop more, uh, RPG board gameish now. Yeah, yeah, yes. So hopefully that's what we can work on. Yeah, but year. anyway, but like and get a billion billion dollars and <laughs> not be afraid to not have the money when we get sued. Yeah, oh, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but I I mentioned I wanted to mention like the stuff we did because like uh this is how uh this group Rhythm's group of that that's making space or uh we, that's what they did for their board game their group and they have a kick they have a kickstarter for it and um yeah it's just a, it, i think like overall if uh i i, I, I would say it's like the most complete and finished out of everyone's because you know they got all the art assets down, they got the gameplay down, you know they got they got everything, you know, hundred percent. So I think you know, I'll, to I'll... be fair, what? To be fair, <laughs> okay. my group, me and Sam also had all the art assets done. We just That's didn't have the gameplay work. <laughs> my group, right? We stuck our own cards together. <laughs> I mean, my we group, we, 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 my group, we had, we had the art, the physical version, not, not really, and the gameplay is somehow yeah, is um, confusing to some people. Space or not, though, uh, made by Vincent plus two of our senior members of our group. Uh, I can't, I can't for the life of me remember what the girl's name was. Let's see. Lexi, that's right. Lexi, and then there's Roy. Uh, Roy. Lex. Yeah. So I don't remember what Lexi's major was, but uh, Roy was from sequential arts. Apparently, she's an animation Yo. major. Yeah. Oh, uh, cool. So, yep, we have an animation major who like.
draws things really fast. We have a sequential major who draws things really fast. And then Even we have faster. Vincent. Yeah. Who programs yeah. freaking fast. <laughs> yeah. Vincent, who is a fucking kid genius. <laughs> nah, you can't call him that legally, I think. I think Sam turned into the new Vincent. In, in the Hong Kong. Yeah, like when, uh, when, when Vincent someone, went back. Someone had to film. <laughs> yeah, when Vincent went back to, to Savannah, we need we needed another Vincent to help us all. <laughs> yeah, so um, basically their group had a lot of talents in it, and so they created this full board game where basically it's all about stealing each other's cards. Building so, your own yeah, it's building your spaceship, building your own spaceships space. and yeah. 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 So um Sam, me, uh Jonathan and Vincent before wait, no, it was Roy. Uh four of us played through a test play session and uh I remember one of us had the really complete spaceship of two space knots and uh <laughs> and the head of the of the spaceship. It was Jonathan, <laughs> I think. So what happened, right? Because uh, there are cards to steal completed spaceship parts from your opponents. Yep. And uh, basically what the game's objective, right? Uh, you start with uh, you start with basically the hull, the body of the, of the sp spaceship. And you have to add at least two fins the head and uh, and the propel uh, the, the the rockets Thruster. on the back thrusters yes you have to have these four cards added to your spaceship before you can launch it and uh, based on what uh, when the game starts you draw a card that says uh, what planet you're aiming for and that increases the points that each parts are worth so like uh, for example there Ours, the one we had, fins were worth uh, double the points. So in the end, it's whichever spaceship with the most points wins the space race. So once someone has a completed spaceship, the other people, uh, the other people, not included, like not only limited to himself, you can start to launch the spaceship. So you need to draw. The, I think it was the. It's like the launch code thing, right? You need yeah, to there's buy, a launch code card. The, the launch cards. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to. Was it you buy them? I I forget, but basically yeah, you, have you have to acquire have to them. Up money and buy yeah. the launch cards. So there's mm -hmm. the there are like three launch cards. There's like the launch, and then there's like ready, and then go, and then you have to have all three purchased, in by whoever it doesn't it doesn't even have to be one person like all three cards have to be purchased from the space and uh all the spaceships will launch regardless of whether or not they're complete and even if your spaceship wasn't technically complete if you have more points then you still win mm -hmm. and that's what happened i won in the end because i just kept uh, building whichever part was worth the most points, and I kept stealing parts from other people. <laughs> and in the end, my my spaceship, I don't remember it being legit, but... Uh, I, I think it, it was just, a mini in the monstrosity. Yeah. It wasn't, like, legitimately a good spaceship, but it, it got the most points, so I won. And uh, Jonathan, who... So let's let's talk about what happened in Jonathan. <laughs> um, so Jonathan was opposite, and uh, and Sam and Roy both had a lot of cards that reversed the turn order. So <laughs> so the turn order for about four turns got bounced between Sam through me to Roy back through me to <laughs> Sam. So I got to take basically the most turns because it just kept bouncing back to me and that's how I kept stealing shit because every time they take a turn they would hire a space or not and protect their gear so what happens with a space or not is you can man them into a part and they they count as an extra point 
but you can also uh, the parts they're manned they're also protected from being stolen so um the space and all is consumed dead when when they protect your thing but uh they since Sam and Roy both have space nods around guarding their shit, I, I could only steal from Jonathan. So Jonathan was able to build this pretty normal-ish looking ship at the beginning. And then I just stripped him bare. And uh, <laughs> in the end, all he had left was the head of the ship. And uh, by the time Roy pressed launch, because Roy was the first person to complete the uh uh fully launchable spaceship right so he started launching by that time jonathan had only begun to tap into buying the resources which had pretty much already been sold out because everyone else had just been taking his turns so there were no parts left on the market and he can't steal from us because we had space amounts guarding the our places and all he had that were valuable was the head of the spaceship and two space knots. so that's a really nice launch he the two space knots could take the head and jump around a bit yeah why would <laughs> uh vincent launch when he knew that he you had more no it there? was uh roy were it was roy playing and he he had more points when he started launching, and it was when he pressed launch that uh, I started bulk purchasing fins. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh. So, it was the final launch, I think it was what I did, because he knew he was behind, yeah. and then I had, I had the money to go into the final stage, so I just did it. Capitalism. <laughs> yes, capital. So, in summary, it's a game basically about the Cold War, I think. <laughs> it's a space race. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, it's also a game about friendships and betrayal. Yeah, so... Mario Party. And, uh, and consumerism. Yeah, Mario Party. Exactly. <laughs> or Monopoly. Monopoly is never about friendship. <laughs> it was, it's all about making enemies. Yes. Monopoly takes <laughs> so long to play. I I don't actually know how anyone actually completes it. I've I've never finished a game of Monopoly. I think well no, I have this... finished. I've never seen a game finished. Because I always yeah. Lose. I think it's because of the house rules where. Uh, you can go to jail and then go to start and collect yeah. 200. Like those type of house rules that make it too easy to keep in the game. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I, th I think I had house rules like that when I was young. Well, like, well I think well, everyone. Parking. Yeah, the free parking bit. Yeah. yeah. Like, free parking is just a slot where you, you park your, your thing and nothing happens. And, um,. In house rules, typically what happens is uh, all the fines yeah. get uh, stacked in the middle, and when you hit free parking, you, you take all the fines, which uh, makes it so that people have way too much cash and never go bankrupt, mm. which isn't what's supposed to happen. Monopoly is all about bankrupting It's a cruel else. game about making yeah. other people... I have no thing left. Yeah, it's, and then taking it's, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's a game like about self-inflicting pain. Land, this plot of land that belongs to me now, and mm -hmm. this plot of land also belongs to me now, and um, it's harsh, but you have nothing left, and you still don't have enough to pay me. Goodbye. <laughs> That's just a <laughs> melodramatic way of saying it. But anyway, um, Space or Nuts, it's, it's got like, I think right as of right now, it's got like, um, it's, like it's more than a third way there of its, to its goal. It's yep. touch goal. And it has, only has like 10 days to go, so I'm a bit worried about that. But hopefully, yeah. 
because um, I, I wish I can I wish I can back the project but I'm so so poor right now I can't can't really you know pledge that much but hey oh, everyone oh. everyone else can hope can hopefully they're interested they can pitch in yeah um, I'm gonna pledge when I have when I give enough of a shit yes. <laughs> I accept to say but uh, I don't think I'm that big of a board game fan that, uh, like, even if I get the game, I don't think... All it needs is one of you to have a copy of the game that I can tag along yeah, with. Yeah, I, I know, I know I what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, um, with yeah, so. Trist Tristan is usually the one that has, like, all the board games, and usually when we hang out with our yeah, friends... So... Yeah, we just like he just when we were like at someone's place or like oh. a, 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 a place where we can like sit around and do stuff. So he just usually brings a bunch of board games. We usually end up playing a lot of the card yeah. games. I feel so like it's the thing to say, just... and I I love Vincent and Roy and Lexi and all, but uh, I'm probably not going to be pledging into it until like final moments where oh shit, someone disconnected. But uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to be pledging into the thing until the final day when they still don't have enough yeah uh, fair that's probably yeah and by I the mean, way I, yeah I, Nick did I, disconnect I, oh he's, he's gone oh dear but I, I feel like because of the history of its birth I'm sure there'll be a copy at our local university anyway yeah that's very true <laughs> I'm just like, uh, uh, like have you seen like um the, the the cost like the production costs of like the project. Uh, they have a whole um, yeah. They have the whole like uh, pie, chart. pie chart yeah for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is, is this like a lot? I, I didn't look into it. Uh, like Sam and I tried working out how much it would cost for us to make Wizards vs Lizards if we were to put it into a real production thing, and yeah, turned it's, out it's uh, not that profitable as <laughs> it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> I think you get what, like a ten percent profit, or something. Like, if you want to sell it at a reasonable price, and yeah. all things considered, maybe know, that's why board games that. are getting expensive nowadays. Yeah, but and uh, like on another note, right? Uh, if we don't use the little nice crystal pellet things, then uh, if we are only limited to printing cards. And that if would we do, be less, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it all depends on what you want to produce. Uh, so that's why stuff like uh, Kingdom Death, Kingdom Death is this uh, very, very erotic Dungeons and Dragons figure series. Okay. And uh, like, so to say, they they make a bunch of money and they charge a lot for their custom figures even though they're just 3d printed they're like they're like 80 us dollars some of them jeez yeah figures are always expensive and, yeah and it all started with a uh, kickstarter from what i remember i i don't play it and i don't intend to but i looked into their figures because uh "Quote unquote research, yep. <laughs> uh, totally for research, yep. and uh, they're really not that big figures. And then they're like Warhammer sized, I think, and um, they still cost a lot of money. So yeah, uh, 3D printing, even with 3D printing being a thing, having physical figures and uh, these little accessories." actually do ramp up the cost a lot yeah i mean um uh, i mean I, that, that's the reason why i feel like doing a card game instead for my for my group well mostly because like yeah. well since uh, there's, there's, only, there's only the two of us and i didn't want i didn't really want because like, when it comes to board games i'm not that creative when it comes to board games i'm not that innovative to coming up with ideas so I just felt like, oh, I just want to make a game that I would like to play. That's, that's simply it. And for 
my game. It was called uh, Rowdy Roughhouses, and because yeah. because so it, there was me. I, I I pretty much pretty much did all the gameplay stuff, and uh, my partner who was Andrea, and she she was because like this was during the time where Cup, Cuphead was released and it was hot, and um, so she was mainly in, she was she, she was mainly inspired by the you know the whole thirties or thirties twenties theme. Of uh, you know cartoons and stuff, and so we came up with this card game about um, you know character. Also, you can't spell Wesley. We can't spell wrestling with up. What? You got caught spell off? wrestling without Wesley. So Wesley decided to make it a wrestling game. Well, it's not really a wrestling. It's more like a, a fi- it's a, a, in, in ways like it's like a fighting game. MMA. It's like a fighting game, MM. but it's still kind of well. Okay, it's probably not wrestling, but because like we do a like there was there was, there was going to be six characters, but we but the time yeah. constraint obviously that was not gonna that realistically we we're, we're, we're probably not gonna reach that goal. So we just, we just stuck with two characters. So we just um, but pretty pretty much it's a CCG game. Uh, but 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 you don't really collect the cards. You only, you only have like a set set pack of cards that's for that character that makes sense like a fighter pack deck yeah so in a sense it's kind of like pokemon cards. yeah it's like like pokemon like magic magic the gathering and stuff because like that was like uh one of their main inspirations like but the main inspiration of the gameplay was duel masters because i i, I like that idea of like having any card to be the mana or energy whatever so I, I I like that kind of like um, strategy thinking whatever, and then yeah, because like I thought it was like simple enough for people of like younger ages or ages above to like un- to get the idea and understand. But I, I also wanted to have um, some RNG in a way, like take, taking taking risk with your with your with your attacks. Because adding another, oh, yeah. adding a, another, ma- and... yeah, I guess like there's also dice rolling in it. Because I want to add like another like way of doing strategies. Like, I don't, I don't want everything to be guaranteed safe, you know. Because I want, because like the RNG made their the game like from what Sam and Ian did when they were testing testing our game. It was mm-hmm. it was funny. <laughs> it was funny and interesting to see. Um, can they can they pull up this move and like there's like tension behind the dice rolling? So yeah, because like um, er- I remember the two characters you had were pretty balanced. I remember, like, yeah, yeah. I think Sam and I played three games against each other. Yeah, you and... you guys you guys played three games against each other, and you each you each got a chance to play e- e- each of the characters. And I think Sam had yeah. like the worst luck <laughs> every time. <laughs> He, he even played against me, and see, he still lost. Yeah, I think Sam just repeatedly lost in that game. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know why. I'm, and I'm it wasn't even. Dice <laughs> it wasn't even due to the characters. It was just. It was just dice rolling. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like um, pretty much how to play. Um, every char- every character has like um stats, right? They have four different stats. They have like a grappling stat, striker. Striking stat, a uh, speed stat, and a charisma stat, and um, depending on that character, it's like you know balanced to be like, oh, they're really good at this, but really bad at that, and so on and so on. So you get the idea of like, oh, which moves I should be doing, because like every move associates with that stat, and like for example, if I want, if if you if you uh, if I want to do a suplex move, that that's a grappling, that's a grappling move that needs a grappling stat. So for example, um. The uh the powerhouse, which is a character who is he, he's a a characteristic a anthropomorphic house with a punching with my like, punching gloves and stuff, and he um he has like the his best stats are is grappling and he needs to roll a uh, a two or above to land a grappling move and by the way is a d is a d six for for a guy, and um so so it's it's the idea of like you know trying to do like a safe move but there's a chance to fail it. But 
pretty yeah, much the game I the remember. game the gameplay is is like magic you what like magic and hearthstone where you got like health and pretty much if you knock someone down to zero you win um i think i just heard nick reconnect oh yeah he's yeah. in <laughs> hi nick we're now oh, talking we're now back. talking about my oh. game i'll come back yeah uh but yeah, to pretty much, pretty much like every move requires mana to use, so you need to sacrifice some cards to, to make some to build up some mana, and you need and you have to tap it every time you use that associated mana. So yeah, there's also a bunch of other stuff but I don't want to get too into it because I don't take too much time. But yeah, I think we can try to move on to other things now. Nick, can you say something? Yeah, sorry. I had to just deal with something. Oh yeah, that's fine. Anyway, um, I guess we can move on to uh, what we've been playing. So, what have you guys been playing? I guess Nick should go first since uh, you're the one new. Oh, uh, so I haven't been doing a lot this summer because I have no idea where what I've been doing. <laughs> but, um, I I completed. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh, cool. I know it's probably a bit late to complete that. Oh no, no, no! no. no it's never too late. I've been a huge fan of the Assassin's Creed series. Um, I, it was one of the first games I played um, on my PlayStation um, Three. I think I played uh, the first one, and the second one, and all the the Ezio trilogy. And um, I didn't. The only ones I didn't play were the ones um, after Black Flag. I I, assume, I think. And um, I think it's because they kind of cut off from the story a bit. Um, but I heard great things from Assassin's Creed Origins, and it it pretty much is like a whole reboot of the kind of the Ezio trilogy. Um, it brings back characters that um, were in the original in the original games, which which was amazing. And uh, yeah, I thought overall it was just a really, really well executed game. Yeah, I heard a lot of complaints about it for having too much of the supernatural in that game, though. Yeah, like... well, there is a bunch of super, um, supernatural. But that's the whole, you know, like, uh, the whole Exio trilogy was all supernatural as well, the Golden Apple, and, um, and, yeah, the Apple of Eden and all of that. But I think that's kind of what makes the game special in a way. You know, it's but not I, just... I, I feel like there's a difference in between the way that Ezio does it and the way that Origins does it and that Ezio, a lot of the supernatural stuff is sort of implied. They're always looking for this super powerful artifact, but we never really see what it can do until basically right at the end. Oh, but yeah, it's like yeah. Origins, where stuff is a lot more explicit. Yeah, so like, yeah, in the, in the Ezio trilogy, it's like when you're trying to find all of those hidden things, right, it's, it's like, like the codex. Uh, yeah. You have to go into Eagle Vision and find it, and it was it was pretty much it was like kind of a, a side part of the game. It wasn't all shoved in your face. And yeah, um, yeah I, I know like Origins, it's kind of like here you go, here's some like supernatural. You've walked into a tomb with like <laughs> with like a bunch of crazy out of like out of like unearthly. Because I remember like I was in the middle of the game, and all of a sudden like. Um, like King, King, Kingdom Hearts or something just comes out and gives you like some like weather, like some um, <laughs> like feather shield straight out. Like I have no idea. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't even know what it is to this day. Like <laughs> it, just came, it just came out right, and some beam of light just comes shooting out of the sky. And then all of a sudden, I've got, I've got like this god sword with with a shield that's like steampunk and it's got like feathered, uh, golden feathers. I have no idea. It was the weirdest thing. It did not mesh with the game at all. 
right? It was like I was fighting these like uh, these like like these like um, pilgrims, and you know, like I look like, and then it then it kind of goes into like Rome, and it's like um, not really an Egyptian game. It's it's kind of like a, a Roman fighting game, which was pretty cool. I think it leads on to the net. Um, the next um, Odyssey. Oh yeah, yeah, Odyssey. it does. Are we talking about Mario? Sorry, what? Oh, that was that me. Again? Oh god, red bars. Oh, right. so, oh apparently my ping is eight hundred or something. Breaking up a bit. Yeah, I am. Ouch. Oh. Well, yeah. Repeat all of that. <laughs> No, uh, hold up. Apparently, Discord is checking for updates. I don't know why. Uh, okay, now it's back to green uh, bars. Hopefully, it stays that way. Anyway, no, I just made a I just made a dumb Mario joke. So, um, so what other games have you guys been playing? So, um, cause I had no internet for the past. Let's count month. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Skyrim. Oh, <laughs> Skyrim is a, is a classic. Is a, Man, yeah. it's crazy. 2011, it came out. And today. So, uh, last time when I... Last time on Black Hawk Talk, I said I was to the Black Reach. I just finished exploring all of the Black Reach, with, which I had never done before. And uh, now I'm I'm doing the Civil War. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Who's Civil who you War. And, uh, yeah, are you Imperials or Stormcloaks? Yeah, uh, who who the hell joins the Stormcloaks on this your races? <laughs> well, the first time I play, I joined the Stormcloak because of uh, like even though they're racist and all, like you you start to think, yeah. Uh, it's kind of this racial pride, isn't it? But yeah, the more you do it, the more of a douchebag I feel like. So I just stopped playing that soon. <laughs> like halfway through the story, just like I I picked the wrong side. Yeah, yeah. but uh, and, yesterday and, I was I doing. A... <laughs> yeah. Are we the baddies? <laughs> yeah, we're wearing bear skin on that. <laughs> but uh so yesterday i was doing the daedric quests and uh i accidentally when doing the civil war quest line i accidentally bumped into the dawn guard daedric quest for vermina where for the corrupting skull which corrupting is skull. uh this priest of mara comes uh comes talk to you and they're like oh uh there's this daedric prince causing nightmares around why don't you uh help me get rid of the nightmare uh, maybe you i can join your party and that sort of thing and uh typically i don't kill good people but because it's a daedric quest and because uh, i haven't done all the yeah like i was considering so hard because what I wanted was to not have to kill him <laughs> so what I should have done was do all the other danger quests first right and then uh, save scum so that I get the achievement and then get get out of there <laughs> load the save and not kill him right but because um, yeah. for for all you people who are like yo it's been how many years and you still haven't 100 percent at Skyrim? I uh, know I haven't, but uh, I haven't. I don't even have to. I mean, I can read the main story, I but I haven't. Everything else. Yeah. I don't even have the Oblivion Walker uh, achievements yet, so that's what I'm trying to get. So I decided, man, uh, Irander is kind of like he was a priest of Fermina, anyways, and he betrayed his brothers to redeem himself uh quote unquote for mara and yo like my 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 ebony blade isn't fully maxed out yet i mean are you so, skilling up all legitly 
Like, no. I remember when I was playing, and I, I remember getting that thieving, um, oh, I think it was the sneaking, I don't really know, uh, skill. Yeah. And I used to, like, go up to those monks and just, like, steal from them <laughs> and pickpocket them for yeah. hours. Yeah, and then I, I remember. Like, smithing, right? You'd forge daggers for it, just. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just yeah, leveling a pickpocket is the worst. Them. So, I, mean, I decided I'd skip through all that because I've already been through all that once. So, I just used the console to get myself yeah. enough skills. Yeah, this is why we played the PC version. Yep. Like, oh, hey, I suddenly have 300 iron ore. What am I going to do with it all? Mm, oh, yeah, I make daggers. Do, do, you yeah, think, no, do they have I... Skyrim for PlayStation 4? Of course. Uh, yep. uh, yeah, I think it's a legendary VR, edition. Well. Yeah, the legendary edition. The whole point of the legendary edition is to to make it for the next gen. Yeah, on the next gen console. Yeah. Because I, I haven't played Skyrim in a long time. I'm probably going to give it a shot. <laughs> Speaking of open world games like Skyrim, oh, yeah. the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer. You guys all watch that? Uh, I haven't really watched it. I just, I just listened to a podcast of people talking about it. Let's see. Uh, forty-eight minutes gameplay trailer. Ooh, it was like, nice. Yeah. Like, I don't usually get too hyped for games, but that that game has my hypes, man. <laughs> Do you know what games I'm really excited about? Is those two Probably samurai? Red oh. No, I'm not really Dead. excited for Red Dead because I never really played the first one. Um, yeah, me too. Oh yeah, so that's kind of I'm right. really excited about the new Spider-Man game by yes. Insomniac. Oh, Spider-Man. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that looks absolutely amazing. I heard it's like I heard that's also open world as well. That's, I think and, so. Yeah. Um, and and the, the samurai games, I can't remember. I think it's uh, I can't remember Sekiro? their name. Yeah, Sekiro, and there's also uh, an open world the, one, the Shadow. Yeah, the... Of something Jima. <laughs> yeah, they look they look amazing those games. But those are kind of far away. Uh... Yeah, they're, they're 2019. But yeah. but Spider Man uh, think... comes out next week. Is it next week? Yeah. That's soon. Oh wow. September the seventh. Think... Wait, what comes out next week? Spider Man. Spider Man. Oh shit. Spider Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. Anyway, before we derail too far, we didn't, we, we didn't even get to Sam or me, what we've been playing, basically. Yeah. Uh, so Sam, what have you been playing recently? Uh, so, um, I picked up, tried For Honor for a bit, because yep. apparently it's not terrible. Um, it's, it's pretty in-depth, actually. It's pretty good fun. The campaign is kind of like, it's predictable. But it sort of teaches you enough to be able to go to the sort of core of the game, which is all about the multiplayer and the different modes. And there's a whole like faction war thing that I the game sort of doesn't tell you about until you've already picked a side. So that's a bit mm -hmm. strange. Um, but I only got the sort of the free basic edition that they were giving out. So I currently have access to a total of like six heroes out of I don't know like twenty something, and because They're it's twenty a something heroes, yeah, it's quite oh, a lot. Oh wow! Um, huh. And so I'm gonna have to slowly work my way to sort of unlocking them all at the very least. Mm. It's sort of it's it's kind of a dirty move in that you can pay to unlock a hero, which lets you play <laughs> as them, but if you want to customize them. Or change their like skills, or change their equipment, or whatever. You have to recruit them, which apparently is different from unlocking them. What? So you start out with the three, one of each sort of basic unit from each faction, and then three from your faction that are unlocked but not recruited. So mm -hmm. basically, they sort of it costs you double to get what most other games would do for you. Which is yeah, so you, you have to basically pay for it, and then you have to unlock it. You, you have to pay for it, like, twice, basically, yeah. 
if you really want to sort of, oh, I don't want this helmet, I want this helmet, and I want these colors, and I, I don't like his this particular skill he's got equipped, so... It's, be it's just because of fashion could... game at the end. Yeah, I mean, all multiplayer games devolve into fashion at the true end game anyway. Yeah, every so multiplayer online, MMO, anything that's multiplayer online that allows customization for your character... It's always going to it, the end game is always going to be fashion. It's all about the bling, yeah. Um, the other game I've been I playing, <laughs> yeah, the other game I've been playing is Two Point Hospital. Oh yeah, I keep it seeing that. Came out. Yeah, it's basically um, I think it's a sequel to Theme Hospital, except for legal reasons they couldn't name it like that yeah, who, or something. I don't really theme hosp hospital. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to that. But basically, it's like Roller Coaster Tycoon, but yeah. you're in a hospital. And it's sort of cartoonish in that the diseases are all, like, weird. Like, one of the diseases is called, like, um, light bulb syndrome or something, where the head is replaced with a light bulb. And so the treatment, and you can watch the animation as they do it, is they literally unscrew the light bulb and then screw on a normal head onto the guy. And that's how you heal him. So apparently Theme, Hos Theme Hospital is by Bullfrog Productions, which is the Peter Molyneux company. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, this Peter by... Molyneux. <laughs> yeah, this one is by Sega, it's, it's all I know, because I hear it whenever the game launches, because it's quite loud. Sega. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's quite <laughs> a lot of fun, it's cute, you know. It's not very difficult. But I've only done the first two levels so far, so... Yeah, you never uh, we'll know see. what happens to the later stages. But it, yeah. like, usually when it comes to like these like oh, tycoon games, they ramp up a difficulty. Yeah, like another one of these diseases is like pan head something, where they've just got a pan stuck on their head, and so the treatment is remove pan from head <laughs> with big elaborate machine. So, you know, it's all in good fun. Yeah. Is there anything else you've been doing? Um, apart from those two uh, and the stuff I talked about on the last talk, no, I think that's it. Yeah. Have you yeah. been playing any any of that RuneScape? I heard that the RuneScape has come out on iPhone or or Android. Okay. Oh, oh I, Android. I don't know. I, I, was, I, I was never big into RuneScape yeah, when it came out. I don't think it's available in the Chinese, well, Hong Kong uh, iPhone app store. No, I would imagine not. So there was a I short haven't... time where so I was I'm subscribed to their subreddit for whatever reason. There was a short time where all the Australian servers were routing through Hong Kong for whatever reason, which I thought was wow. pretty funny. Because I generally play on the Australian servers when I do play because lower ping. Yes. So I think if yeah. if I were playing at that time, I would have gone Hong Kong, Australia to Hong Kong to Australia. Because whatever <laughs> issues they were having. So, but no, I haven't touched that in, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. It, RuneScape for me is very sort of. Um, uh, Touch and go. Comes and goes. Yeah, exactly. You get into bars and you play it for a few weeks and you're like, oh yeah, this is great. And then yeah, that's after exactly. you're kind of like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm most people like that. <laughs> Wesley, like, it's now your turn. Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, like, I've been playing. I've been playing like the usual games. I've been playing like playing again and again. Um. So the one, the recent one. Uh. I don't know if you guys like are subscribed to my channel. I doubt it. Cause why would you? Um. We um we've been having sessions with Gmod, and we've just been playing a lot of uh, Trouble in Terrace Town. But we we keep trying to get some uh, more mods going in, so we want we got custom models going on now. So we cannot be like, well, <laughs> depending what the workshop has or what what we want, we can just like subscribe to all these like models and like characters and so and so on and so on. It gets it gets kind of silly, but most of the time we agree to have uh, normal humanoid characters for the sake of the game <laughs> just to make sure we know where the where the limbs and head is when we shoot each other because <laughs> i don't know if you yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know if you know this guys 
shooting at the Riedel's bag is really hard to shoot for the head. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, I'm looking at your thumbnails. I see Kermit and. Oh, right. yeah, that, that, that's just that's just the Scotland one. That's just the ones to make sure it's not yeah. so crowded in that thumbnail. There's like a way a lot more in in there <laughs> in the in the sessions we have, but like um, there is it's just it's just yeah TTT um if you guys played it before have you ever have got you have you bleh, can't can talk can you guys do you guys play the Gmod games or do you even have Gmod? I, I tried to play Gmod this summer. The thing about Gary's mod is. The downloading. Oh me. yeah, that, that's every like, Valve game. It's it's. I download the game finally, like after downloading the game, and then when you're trying to get onto a server, it takes like an hour for for my computer and my my internet. Uh, it it will take a good two hours for me to actually get onto the server, download, and then when you do get onto the server, there's all the textures are all pink. Oh uh, yeah, yeah the missing textures. The textures you know separately so it's just such a hassle and i'd rather be you know like watching tv or, or watching uh you know you know porn oh <laughs> i was gonna say or just watch some That's youtubers nice. play a bunch of gmod games <laughs> as i do there's like the people i'm subscribed to it's like oh they're just playing they're playing gmod stuff yay it's fun yeah i tried playing them as well but uh feels like too much time investment for like too much work to do. I don't know yeah. why I'm okay with modding Skyrim, but it's not really <laughs> Gmod. I guess it's Gmod's that weird. Skyrim is Instant. playable. Yeah, like Skyrim is playable as a base game, and yeah, Gmod exactly. is kind of you need to do work to make it work. I feel like the reason Gmod why is, is a huge like yeah. sandbox. It's kind of like here's an empty world. Here's a thing that'll let you spawn stuff. Go. Cause I feel like and the reason why Gmod is so is so popular, like you don't need you don't need a powerful computer to play it. So we got like a, we got like another majority of players who can easily play the game. And then the modding community is insane. Like the amount of stuff you can play and like the production value in these in these set games are just so high. And it says the countless servers as well. It's just you know kind of perfect for like you know. 10 or below children who wants to play the game, aka me back in the day. <laughs> Shit. That's the thing, like, I, 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 the, the players on Gmod as well, Some sometimes I can't even bear the, the screaming. It's like, <laughs> you, you gather all of the, like, the, the cancer of the world and you <sighs> put it into this game, and it's just screaming you in your ear. It's like, like a 13 year old, oh god. If you want to play a nice game with some, you know, 12 to 13 year olds, go on to one of those servers, They'll, you know, scream at you. Yes. <laughs> oh man. But, uh, yeah, it's just, Gmod is it's like a very, um, uh, very like a uh, classic game. We, it's like on the channel, it's like one of like the, um, I would say like, um, <laughs> The one with the most videos because because we're playing so many different kind of stuff and the sessions really are usually just like amusing and but I find it I find it really hard to edit as well because like I don't want to like cut so much stuff out because I want to keep them all in but eh, I don't know it's just, it's just mostly be me being like a producer yeah, trying to make, yeah. trying to make sure it's really fun when me. you're playing yeah because it's like, it's all about playing with friends right. It's all. It's really fun playing with friends, and that's that, that's the main thing. I... FF14. I played it a while as well. I yeah, you're back. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. The stream. FF14... The stream was. The stream was dead. So, uh, you might need to repeat whatever you guys just said. What? Oh. Yeah, because oh, I disconnected. That but... was my internet died for a moment. Therefore, the stream died oh. for a moment. Oh. Okay. Okay. So uh, I was just saying, uh, I've started downloading. Lineage 2, a classic wow. server, and uh, it's a subscription-based server. It's an old-school RPG, uh, MMORPG, and uh, I'm just looking forward to playing something old-school again. And uh, Nick was saying he's been playing FF14. Okay. And uh, yeah, FF14, and I've I was just about to talk about FF14. So, 
Square Enix, right? Square Enix, they make these beautiful games that are really fun to play, and then their customer service is shit. Yep. So I played uh, FF14 for a while, and I really loved it. And uh, and then after I came back to Hong Kong, so I was playing when I was in Australia, and then I came back to Hong Kong. And uh, since Australia and Hong Kong are such faraway places, uh, my account got locked because um, suspicious activity apparently. So I You're just never bothered to deal with it. Plus, I was busy looking for a job back then, so I uh, I just stopped playing. And and then, so l about last uh, December or something, I wanted to get back into FF14, right? So I remember my old account, I went back into it, and it's still locked, and I can't unlock it because I'm still using the Hong Kong IP. <laughs> And and apparently they have also locked every action that's accountable using this IP, so I can actually not use my IP to do anything. Not can't even buy a new account. If I buy a new account, which I did, I paid uh, an extra for an extra account, and I went to register, like I went to activate it. I couldn't activate it because this IP is absolutely blocked. And they wouldn't and I fix reached, anything for you. Yeah, I, I reached out to the customer service, right? I reached out to, and then apparently the uh, the people who do the IP blocking is in a separate uh, DRM company. And I reached out to that DRM company, right? And then they're just like, yo, you're not supposed to be contacting because uh, we don't handle all these account banning shits, and uh, you need to go back to... So the ball gets tossed around back and forth, right? And finally, they're like, oh, uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to unlock your old account, which doesn't solve anything, because with my IP, I still cannot <laughs> renew my subscription. So my account is unlocked, which means I can log in, but I can't renew my subscription. So I stopped trying. Just never. Uh, and then, and, like, and then you've never played since. Um, I might try again after this month because uh, our internet is supposedly getting a speed upgrade, and I'm thinking that might change the IP as well. <laughs> and hopefully, it might get my account. Like, hopefully, I might be able to renew my subscription then. And if I renew my subscription, I'll go back in. But if not, then I'll just play something else. But FF14 is one of those games that when I went in, I was like, wow, this game looks beautiful. And all the animations are great. And uh, plus it yeah, follows yeah. the old school, uh, like the old school Trinity. So you have healers, you have DPS, you have tanks, which is all I want in an MMO. Because <laughs> all I want to do is heal people. Except, it, and, uh, it, and it's simple. Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what I've heard is uh, when you get to the late game, as a healer, you're expected to DPS because uh, the more damage you deal, uh, the less you have to heal, which kind of go against the whole mentality of healers, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll handle it when I get back. Yeah, yeah so that's FF14 and Square Enix's shit customer service yeah anyway <laughs> before my internet died uh, i think uh, i yeah. think i'm pretty much done talking about uh, gmod um yeah. i recently got uh, an xbox one controller for the pc oh, how is it i feel huh i feel like for asian hands xbox one controllers are way too big all right oh well, i mean i i can like comparing it to the pro controller i'll get it, i'll get to it later but pretty much the the version I got it was like the only one um, the PC store I go to I, I go I go to mm -hmm. um, they only had like the one where you it's it's Bluetooth as well like you can plug it in and it's Bluetooth nice so um, yeah, yeah. yeah it, um, I mean yeah it, it feels it feels nice but I will say like if if I wanted like compare it to the Pro controller I will say like yep. uh, the triggers and the bumper I was, I think that's better. 
but for uh the D pads are debatable. They really like kind of kind of like equal equal value. But I feel like oh, the pro I, the, I, the pro controller has the I feel like has the better um joysticks and face buttons. Okay. Yeah. Because like the the pro controllers face buttons to um since they're bigger and flatter they feel nice to press. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, with with the, with the Xbox's face face control face buttons, I had this problem with like, the 360 and the original Xbox. I just feel like over time, I feel like it will get worn out too quickly, and that makes sense. I don't feel like they'll get worn out. I just feel like I, just, uh, I don't. I don't feel. Like, I, don't, I, I, I don't never like the liked texture. a really smooth. Yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah. I just don't like the texture of it. Yeah, that's why it's I like. like if you if you really if you're really invested, then you should probably buy like a scuff controller. Then you can kind yeah. of you can customize. Oh yeah, you know, the whole controller. In my opinion, like the Switch Pro controller is like the perfect hand size. Because, mm-hmm. uh, like I've been playing Dark Souls, basically one through three with my Xbox. Uh, 360 to Xbox One controllers, yeah. and I've always had the issue where um, my my index finger isn't long enough, and hitting the triggers feel very awkward. Yeah, I have I have like very small hands, but I feel I guess I I, I can yeah. ad- I can adapt to every controller because like I know, I know I'm, every time I, when I hear people people complain about the PS4 controller that is too small. Yeah. Yeah, the Xbox, uh, no, the PS4 controller is kind of, it's kind of about the right size for me, but uh, the Xbox One controller, just a bit too big, but uh, let's see. Yeah. I have all three of them here. But I I feel like the the Xbox One controller is better than the Xbox 360. Oh yeah, definitely. That's the reason why I got it. I I have the 360 um, controllers, because I had a 360, and... um, but I, it's a, the Xbox One controller just feels like a better, just so much. It's like a huge upgrade, upgrade from the 360 because the D-pad is actually a proper D-pad now, not like a like a wonky mess the 360 yeah. was. <laughs> God, I hated that. I hated yeah, the D-pad. So the, my problem with the Xbox One controller is the not the trigger button, uh, not the triggers, but the shoulder buttons. The shoulder buttons are kind of in an awkward place for me, and. Uh, Right now, the way I'm tapping them is uh, using the middle part of my index finger because my yeah, index that's that's not that's not how I that's not how I use their controller. Because like my yeah. the, okay, so my my if I'm playing if I'm playing a shooter on the Xbox, so yeah. both thumbs on the analog sticks, index fingers on the bumpers, yeah. and middle fingers for the for the triggers. That's my that's my hand positions. Yeah, uh, yeah. If that's I hold cool. it like that, it feels yeah. more comfortable. It's almost claw, but not really. And, uh, like, if you just twist your index finger down a bit. So, yeah, if you hold it with a semi-claw grip, then it feels more comfortable. But uh, for me, that's kind of awkward. Whereas the, uh, I'm more used to having just the index finger for both the shoulder and the triggers. Yeah, I, I do that for so certain games, both. but... Yeah, when when yeah, like when like so yeah, when it comes to, like, games where, where, where both bumpers and triggers are important, like, again, most shooters are... It's just like that position is more natural, but again, like I feel like the triggers for the Xbox compared to the Pro Controller just feels more responsive. So, so when growing up, though, did you guys? Oh, I I I grew I grew a wide wide array of controllers. Cause I grew I grew the Game the GameCube controller. I grew up with the the original Xbox controller, and so on and so on. But did you grow up playing on the PC those games? Yes, like, I, I, like PC was like the first first yeah. like game console or like game thing I did. Like first I was keyboard, keyboard and mouse. So ever since I prefer keyboard and mouse over everything else. Yeah, but the so controller like, that I probably grew up with the most is the N sixty four, which is the weirdest one. <laughs> yeah, that is. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, I was not. I don't think but, I was yeah. alive when the N sixty was hot. <laughs> I mean, N sixty four was hot. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up playing PlayStation One, PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three, and then PlayStation Four. Never had an Xbox. Yeah, I mean, how, have, have you, how about really how about handhelds, you guys? 
like handheld. yeah, Game Boys, PSPs. Never been comfortable. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, those, those are a bit like controllers, aren't they? Yeah, um, I'm just like yeah, saying, because uh, like, like I don't think any of the handhelds have ever been comfortable to hold for me. Really, I, I enjoy the the DSs. Game the Boy DS Color. are okay, but they aren't like comfortable to hold. Um, I quite like the Game Boy Advance. Oh yeah, the Game Boy the Game Advance. Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance the original good. one was pretty good. I had but the SP I have, was. Yeah, I had the SP as well. Left, the yeah. SP was really fun to play because it's so small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to carry my SP in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. On the go. Alright, so I realized my biggest problem with the Xbox One controller is mine, my analog sticks are actually kind of warm. Oh. Ah. Yeah. And uh, my Switch controller's analog sticks are still pretty much intact. I don't yeah, know how that... this happens, I think. This, like that's that's I another thing with with, with controllers, right? They get worn out eventually, but like I feel like that's that's why I feel like about the Xbox One controller. It feels like this this is this is for the messy kind of gamers or the sweaty kind of gamers because I feel like because the 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 casing yeah, it's not... feels very uh tight if that makes sense. Not like tight tight, but like good quality tough oh. kind. But the thing is, uh. Now I remember my biggest problem and the reason why I switched away from it. Uh, the D-pad for the Xbox One controller, um, there's a sensitivity issue that's caused by the spring inside uh, not flipping out, like not springing back up. So I actually had to open this thing about three times now uh, to like re-flip re the spring inside to get it to better register and uh, in games like Dark Souls where the d-pad is actually very important um, oh yeah yeah especially when pressing up uh, my Xbox one controller doesn't always register going up and who needs uh, to heal up is yeah exactly who needs to heal right so uh, that is like the biggest problem I had with this controller otherwise I think it's actually but uh, yeah, all of the new controllers they've pretty much gotten rid of all the um all these screw holes so they all feel like one seamless chunk when you hold it when you hold it, right? Yeah. So Well, I, th I thought just... the reason why all the old controllers minus Nintendo had those weird D-pad things was cuz Nintendo had the patent for it. Yeah, they still do. Oh yeah, yeah, so, I remember that. So that's why all the like no one can make that one piece uh, D-pad with uh, four arrows like Nintendo. So that that's the design on the Pro Controller for those who don't know. And uh, if another company makes a controller with the uh, exactly this design of D-pad, then they will get sued by Nintendo. Yeah, that's the reason why they're. The the PlayStation controller is, is like a very... It's uh, like four different buttons. Yeah. And uh, the Xbox one is kind of this... I don't know what you call it, but it's just a D-pad without all the... It's just this weird smooth path. <laughs> I feel like it's, it feels like it's meant to be like another um, analog stick in a way. I mean like... Um... The 360 was kind of like that. Thing. Yeah, the 360 was, but this one is more like... I don't know. But, yeah, I used the directional pad too much for the Xbox One controller, mm. so that one's kind of gone right now. Yeah. The, but... the, the PS4 controller has that nice pad in the middle. The and the I've gotten screen? so used to tapping on that little pad thing. Yeah, the touchpad. Uh, yeah, I've gotten so used to pressing that for Monster Hunter World that <laughs> now that I play on the PC with my Switch Pro controller, the two buttons just don't... they just don't feel like they're in the same place. But that's a minor issue. Well, the mm. PS4, the sticks are in a different place compared to the other two. Yeah, they're, they're, it's, oh, like the only, it's the only one with their, like, both in the middle, like, both in there. Yeah. Lower middle. I don't actually mind where the sticks are, like... Yeah, I don't uh, mind it either. Where you... Yeah. Um, 
It's, I don't uh, even. I don't even notice. You know. <laughs> yeah, with, yeah. It's like when, when when you just play the game, and you, you just yeah, you don't focus on the controller. It's always just both thumbs on the analog. Yeah. Just always both thumb on analog for default. You know? Yeah, it's just pretty much as long as your thumbs are touching analog sticks, you're you're fine. Yeah. But yeah, the reason so, why yeah. I got the oh, <laughs> um, the reason why I got the Xbox One controller because I, I my 360 I didn't I was starting to like hate their 360 controller because it was starting to get a bit okay. worn out. So I, I decided to buy their their um, their Xbox One controller. But I was ho I was hoping to, to get like just the the normal wired version, but the PC store I went to didn't didn't, didn't have it. So I had to uh, buy like the one the Bluetooth. It's like a, it's like an extra ten ten US dollars, but yeah. For what the about the, the Steam controller? Um, I don't that's know. That's actually... that's a whole different story. Yeah, that's one I'm actually really tempted to get, but it's too expensive as of now. Well, yeah, because uh... there there are sales. Um, I think the summer sale just passed where you can get the the Steam controller for really cheap, but like right now, I think it's really expensive. But like, um, it's just that in Hong Kong, if you visit the shops, they're usually a bit more overpriced compared to. Yeah, the they other. are. But I don't think I've seen a controller. I've seen them like once or twice. You need you need to go to the stores that that do PC games. Yeah, oh. and I've, I've seen, yeah, like just from the layout, it feels like they're kind of missing something. I'm the not analog sure sticks. <laughs> There's only one. They have yeah. one analog stick, but yeah, I'm guessing that's kind of what it's missing. Because if you have a trackpad for the other bit, then to scroll really far, you kind of have to keep swiping, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, like a phone. And I think, which isn't that great, I imagine. I, I well, honestly uh... think the Wii had the best controller. <laughs> I mean, you mean the Wii Pro controller, or is it just the Wii Mode plus the Wii, the Wii Mode? Yeah, the Wii Mode. I mean, if you really like the the, the point and click method, it's actually really nice. Yeah, it was fine. Like having having yeah. a two in different hands was really pretty. Like the fact that you can play on a couch and spread out your arms and not be, you know, not be. And then they control. started. And then they started like making like tennis rackets for it, guns <laughs> for it. You know, I thought, oh my god. Yeah, no. My only gripe with the Wiimote is when you're holding it sideways, it's a bit tricky to hit B yeah. button in the back. Also, but... the one and two buttons when you actually need them are kind of awkward. Yeah, like. And I... The disconnecting of the the thing. <laughs> Always disconnecting. Uh, to press that red button at the back. Oh. Or oh, oh. the sync button. Yeah, the sync yeah. button. Getting those all connected. The thing I am most impressed with with uh, Switch Pro controller is the battery yeah. life. This thing, like this thing, just never dies. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's crazy. So, so do you still play your Switch, you guys? I, I don't yeah. have it. Uh, uh, I mean, been... I've been trying to think of more games to get for it. Like, I'm, I'm tempted to get um, Overcooked too. Yeah, that seems like a lot of fun. But like, when it comes to those games, like, just I, 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 don't, I can't free play by myself when I'm alone. So I need it. I need to like play when you know friends yeah. are over, kind of thing. Or yeah. go, I'm or go outside. To get on Steam or uh, the Switch. Yeah, sales, yeah, sales that's, on that's, Nintendo. That's, the, that's the conundrum. Because Overcooked yeah. 2 is definitely a party game. Yeah. And it's always better when you're in the same room as your teammates because then it's much more satisfying to yell at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Versus Steam, like, you're okay, you're going to talk to them over Discord or Skype or whatever. It's just not the same because you can't lean over and swack them. You know? Like I'm feeling like Switch is becoming the indie machine because, like these indie games with short bursts, that you can just turn on your Switch and play. Whereas, 
like launching Steam, getting online, mm -hmm. joining a session, that sort of thing is kind of annoying. Yeah, well, yeah. different. Yeah, the Switch is also portable as well. Remember, yeah, you can't yeah, that's the whole. That's the selling the point. Um, so, like, I had really tried to debate and uh, enter the Gungeon as well. Now that the Steam ver and uh, now that the Switch version is out, I have been debating whether I should get it on Steam. <laughs> have you yeah. have you tried Fortnite on the Switch? Not yet. No. I have not tried Fortnite full stop. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I'm I'm avoiding it like the plague. Well, yeah, I, I think Fortnite is slowly dying. I might be completely wrong, but oh, I, I I hope not. <laughs> um. I think it is slowly dying because people it's just repetitive, isn't it? It's ev after every single season. Yeah, just like League of Legends and look how strong that's changes. going. And everyone gets hyped up for a new season with a whole new map. But the map never changes. So mm -hmm. people are getting Again, just of... like League and it's still going. <laughs> yeah, but the like... difference is with League, right, they add in new, new characters. Champion. Yeah, new champions yeah. with different play skills, right? This is the they the only thing they add in is the skins, right? Which is not new champions. It's the exact same thing, and then they add in a few guns, or you know they've added in this golf cart a few weeks ago, uh, which you can drive around now. But other than that, um, bit I'll boring. say the League of Legend champions have been quite uh, stagnant recently like most the recent meta is, uh, the most recent one they read is probably a who? like Akali the oh no 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 oh right it's Nunu no, no. yeah Nunu no, no got a oh, reword I think yeah uh, before that was Akali okay uh, That's but a shame. Like, everything needs to have a dad, and everything needs to have a skill, a skill shot nuke. Uh, yeah, they're getting rid of all the targeted abilities. Yeah, and then everything has probably a shield or a <coughs> utility skill, and the ulti is the variable, and so... Like, even two years ago, it's already very samey. The whole meta, and now it's just even worse, isn't it? I feel like that's one of the reasons why I'm not into MOBA. Like, once the meta sets in and you play anything other than the meta, you seem to never do well. Yeah. I just want to, you know, remember Nunu as he was before the rework. Because he <laughs> uh... Full uh, AP. Yeah, they... It was a lot of yeah. fun. Well, I guess you can still build in full AP right now. But you don't have the, the think... core ability, which is a snowball thing. Uh, his Q became a... His Q hasn't changed, really. It's his W... Consumed. Yeah, it's, it's identical. His W is basically... He... Snowball it, rolling. It's, it's a snowball rolling thing, which is yeah, weird. Instead of the, uh, before was a buff. Yeah, Before his was just... buff. Yeah. And his E was the snowball, which has now become... I thought it's it just like turned weird... into a skill shot. It's a weird, like, AoE slow ability I don't really get. It was a single shot, oh. but, like, target, single target attack. You threw it, uh, and it's, it, like, uh, splashed it's it. It's a machine gun thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a it's weird. Thing. But they haven't really touched his ultimate, so... I guess now the AP Nunu combo has to W E R instead of just spamming yeah. Q, just spamming E. I mean, I always found it so much fun to spam E though. Yeah, that was that, no, that, that's what made Nunu fun. How dare you play it the fun way? How dare you play it the fun way? You aren't supposed <laughs> to have fun. You're supposed to compete. I'm sorry, I didn't build tank. I, you know. I just wanted to kill 80% of someone's health bar and then run next to them and laugh because they're slowed as well. How dare you have fun? Mm. Yeah, no. 
You know, yes. actually, the league, I think, is slowly dying. Because a lot of the yeah. big people are pulling out. A lot of the big YouTubers are like, I'm not playing it anymore. It's not fun. What about the esports? Is oh. is that still going big? I it's, it still happens. I don't know I if it's as big as scale. As long as uh, they're getting Chinese investment companies tossing in money, I don't think they're gonna go away anytime soon. Yeah, that's very true. It's all about it's all about the market but, demand. Isn't yeah. it like the biggest? Oh, that's Dota, isn't it? <laughs> but like Tencent is kind of in a really bad spot right now. Yeah. Of, yeah, uh, from the from last. From esports last time. might actually go away. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, they. The Chinese government has imposed a law to limit game time on minors, which they already tried years ago and didn't really work. And now they're Isn't kind of. What... I think it's the most stupid thing. Isn't that what Korea does though? <laughs> uh, they Korea say has they do it. Curfew and stuff, no? Uh, what happens in Korea is you need to register with an adult Your ID, ID to get yeah. unlimited access, which was what China used to do as well, except for the Chinese gaming companies, because uh, why limit your own growth? So, so um, there are tons of ways to get around it, and uh, now they're kind of hard pressing down on Tencent's games as well so hence i might actually be screwed i don't know uh, well yeah this is actually an interesting thing to talk about is should we limit people's time playing games hell no <laughs> For instance, I, I don't really know the reason i don't really know what's going on in, in career like do like the kids just play games and like not have any family time or something because that you know, does actually be happen like, in Asian countries uh, especially back when uh, internet cafes were a thing I think they still are a thing in Korea and Taiwan and uh, that sort of places but uh, there used to be like every month there would be a news report where someone has died basically from not moving from their spot. Yeah. Not it's been the last 20, no, it's That's been the last crazy. like 80 hours or whatever playing some MMO yeah. or game just sort of collapsed from lack of yeah, nutrition. Just, yeah, then they just die like that. And or that is the parents be... who like neglect their kids and the kids die? Because the parents are like too busy gaming or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's actually true as well. Sorry. So. Yeah, you disbanded from the family. Yeah, Which... but uh, I know like it's easy for the government to blame lots of issues on games, but I think that chalks up more to education more than games. Just a, I think just it's a... the parents. The parents need to, need some more like discipline skills. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Like, you don't have that much of these types of issues in the West, then why would there be so much of a problem in the East? But I guess that's a culture thing as well, huh? Yes, it is. Yeah, like, to not to be, like, racist or anything, but, um, like, in Asian countries, right, isn't it more, more studying? But because my friend, my best friend, is Asian. And she hated, uh, his mum hated me. I used to come around to his house and always bring my computer and like play games with him. And she, <laughs> the, only thing that, the only thing she wanted his, um, her son to do was study. So like every single time I would come over to his house and sleep over, she would have to check my backpack to see if I brought my computer. Um, <laughs> because, because she thought I was a bad influence on him. So what we used to do is we used to just um, leave my computer outside and sneak it in um, when she went to sleep. <laughs> <Christ. Wow. laughs> so I have this, I have this thought that um, the more you try to restrict it, the more competent it becomes, and the more people are going to try to 
play their over their fair share. Whereas if you don't try to limit anything, then people get bored of it pretty easily. Like, and that's everything in life. Wheat, like yeah. drugs, alcohol, you know, like kids want to do things that they can't do, basically. Yeah. And if you restrict so them, I'm thinking, doing it. I'm thinking it's kind of sh like shooting yourself in the foot when you try to restrict these type of things too much. Mm hmm. Because so, I know that's what I but did. But that's just my two cents. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I remember my dad try to try to like make sure me and my brother don't don't play more games. We just find ways to keep playing games. Or keep playing yeah, the video that's, games. That's the childhood mentality, right? Yeah. Oh, if my parents don't want me to do it, it must be awesome. No, it's more like I want to play video games. <laughs> I don't want I don't want I, I wanna keep playing video games. That's that was my mentality. So yeah, like when they say no, you can't play, then you go five more. They just let you play, then probably you get bored of it. Like maybe you're really addicted to it for two weeks, but after that, you're like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I mean, because like so, so basically, yeah. as a kid, introduce I had like kid, nothing. But... Uh, introduce your kids to video games over the summer holiday, and by the time it's over, they'll be bored of it. So when Hopefully. I used to, when I used Is to carry in the car with. Um, my, my my best friend and his mum, she used to always give me this speech saying, I'm like, why do I play video games? And I would respond saying, oh, because it's <laughs> fun, right? And then she would give me this lecture how video games damages the cells in my brain. Yeah, that's and every parent, <laughs> especially mine. I don't really agree with that. I, I think Call of Duty makes me a really good shooter. But, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> so, well, oh. then again, like, kids' brains do work different from ours. Like, we're now adults, so to speak, and uh, we get bored of shit, but maybe kids don't. I don't know. I mean, kid, I mean, kid, kid child yeah, as, gamers as have the you, most patience. Yeah. If you think about it, yes. As, as you grow old and your st and your library backlog grows longer, the motivation just isn't there. I feel like yeah. I'm still Mass Effect One is still on my list of things to play, but realistically, I'm never going to touch nah. it. You can't play Mass Effect One anymore. Life is there. It's just not a playable game, it's just not <laughs> quality of life. Like, okay, so all we're saying is uh, to control your kids uh, and to not play in games, just give them 80, just give them a full <laughs> Steam library and let them pick what game they want to play. And uh, they'll never be able to by any decision. Yeah. And then they'll just walk away and do sports. <laughs> I, mean, I wish. Yeah. I wish I was able to do that. Yeah, basically, <laughs> bore them out with the video games until they get extremely bored and they have to go outside. Yeah, basically. so feed them this list of 110 Steam games and tell them to pick. That way they'll oh. never be playing video games again. Or force them to play, that's even better. <laughs> no, you can't do your homework until you've played eight hours of Minecraft. <laughs> also, you must reach 10,000 subscribers today. <laughs> That's uh, child labor. With the grinding games, you have to like, yeah, force them to, to, to you know, you know, burn wood for for four hours. <laughs> Yo, that was the best thing, though. Okay, no joke. Fucking RuneScape, leveling up your fire making. <laughs> Yeah. That was all it was. <laughs> it was literally. We just did a, that a for bunch so of people long. around the fire just talking. <laughs> yeah, what's your level? Ninety-four. Oh, I'm ninety-five. Like. Oh no! Back before bonfires, though, it was lighting fires in a huge light, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really yeah. fun. I mean, that's all you did, and people, loads of people, still did it. Like, how are you gonna bore people that are, you know, thirteen, fourteen? Or however old people. Yeah. Oh. 
Anyway, if you can be I'm entertained a, by that. I remember covering the Grand Exchange with just just a <laughs> bunch bunch of bunch of uh, fires. That was like my my favourite thing to do. And mm. and also killing the chickens in in Lumbridge, but <laughs> that, was, that was a different Anyway to move on from, from this. <laughs> Um, I forgot to mention another another thing. I've been. Oh my Oops. god! What was that? That that's that's. No, I'm I'm just peeking around this room. It's not my room, so I'm sneaking a look at what's in the drawers. <laughs> you sound like you is, sound like you're in someone's house. You you broke into someone else's house. <laughs> one of the things that's not in the drawers is a sufficient oil. I see. Okay. Anyway. Uh, For the filing cabinet. Yeah. Uh, another, another. Uh, well, I the other day I woke up really sore because I was playing a lot of Just Dance. <laughs> oh, hey man, you know what? I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> I mean, were you by yourself? Were you? Okay? Yeah, yeah. I got no. I, I, I actually play dancing games like legit, <laughs> like for enjoyment. You know? Yeah. Why didn't you show us any of your moves when we went in class? Yeah, I mean, I, dude, he we don't, we don't have the game. Us when we, <laughs> yeah, he showed us when we went over to his place, and uh, turns he out us. Wesley is, yeah, turns yeah. out Wesley is fitter than all of us combined. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Uh, well, like again, like for the, the, the dancing games, always like a, um, back in free the three sixty, like with the connect. That that was pre the, my main reason why I wanted to get three sixty and a connect was so I could play Dance Central. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That, that that was like that was like my only selling point for the three sixty at the time because like because like I was like I was like happy with my PC Halo. and Nintendo stuff. So I was like I but my brother really wanted to um. We we wanted to play the 360, so we just saved up and then we got the 360, and I just mostly just played a lot of um, a lot of Dance Central. It was it was Dance Central and WWE 2K14. That was all the stuff I played on my 360 all the time. WWE was really good. I remember playing that a lot. Yeah, but um, I remember playing a dancing. The only dancing game I played was I think it was Just Dance on the Wii. Oh yeah, that was like the original and, uh, one. Yeah, the original one, and I, I, I just cheated because I wouldn't. Yeah, dance, yeah, because you, 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 you just need to do the motions <laughs> with the with the one hand. Yeah, yeah. like walk, like wearing themselves out, you know, boot flying their arms around. You know, all you have to do is flick the the wrist, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, that that, that that's true for anything on a Wii though, like Wii tennis. Yeah. Yeah, just like just keep, keep flicking. Just keep flicking. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just... You know, like we tennis. You know, like that powerful shot. Everyone thought it's like swipe it the fastest. Right? Yeah, really. You know, you get that really powerful. It's it's all about the just the flick, the flick of the wrist. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you just keep flicking, your guy can defy gravity. <laughs> that is true. He does just fly to the ball. Yeah. Did any of you have like the Wii uh, running pad? I can't remember what it's called. Oh, uh, the, uh, the Wii Fit? No. The, the Wii Fit pad? Sport. The Wii Fit, yes. I, I used to have one of those. That, that was the best, running on that, you know. I used to do, you know, do like one mile runs, you know, like 5Ks, you know. And then you just see like your me running around looking at all the views. <laughs> Hey, anyway. I actually thought that it used to make you fit, but I actually just looked like a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, jeez. What's happening over here, Sam? Sam, are you sure you're yeah, not breaking into someone else's house? Head. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just adjusting my headphone and then it just fell off my head. Oh, okay. See, it's not always me. Yeah, I thought I thought it was, a, it was a case of assault and battery. <laughs> Oh shit! Shit! No! No! Oh no, God! God! <laughs> Alright. But uh, back to like um the stuff I I do because like I I I like dancing and uh, I'll show I'll, I'll just link you guys to one of their, just like the hardest songs in Dance Central Free and I because like Dance Central One, Two, and Three I have I have all three games and five star all the songs, which is the max thing you can do. <laughs> 
the, 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 that's, just, like, that's just how much I really enjoy these games because like I enjoy the Dance Central games because the choreography is really fun and it feels very like you know how should I say like energetic and gets it's good for exercise if that makes sense I'm trying to find a word I'm for it I'm losing my breath watching this oh yeah I mean go ahead I mean jeez like, um, uh, <laughs> I mean, if, if it's that, it's very mesmerizing when you watch someone else. Even even imagine myself trying to do this is making my muscles sore. <laughs> like, I can't. Um, but uh, yeah, you but you guys watch it. I'll try to explain my story when it comes to that Dance Central games. Um, Dance Central games sense sense is connect, so that means that means it's it's full body, so. Like your legs, your legs, your legs, your foot, your hands, your arms, your limbs, everything counts. Everything in your body counts. So like not not like just dance, but you can like cheat with one hand, and then and just you and just focus on one, on the controller. No, you have to do the entire motions. And that's that's the reason why I want to get a connect and and play the dance central games because of it. So um, I got <laughs> I I I just went in and get one 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 two and three because like you can like um. Because when when you play free, you can import. If if you have one and two, you can import the songs for one and two into free, so you have all the songs available available for you pretty much. And yeah, just five star owing every everything. Some of it was some of it was really hard. Some of it was a challenge. Some some took a very long time. But the thing is, it's a very it's also it has a really good tutorial. Um, that pretty much like lets you like um break it down. I think it's literally called break it down in, in, in for going training mode or oh, the tutorial modes of how to do the dance and you do like you do like you can you can like you can like focus on like one move one specific move that you have trouble with and you can like repeat you can like just practice and practice and practice it and that's what that's what makes it really a good uh, overall game so kind of like dark souls <laughs> yeah just <laughs> practice makes perfect but so what just saying is we all need to go to a nightclub to see you tear up the dance floor that <laughs> yes yes that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that it just means i just like playing the game no but no, what I if they give you a vr headset and you can play it i think what it means is that um just dance is the dark souls of dancing games <laughs> i mean it's like <laughs> I guess so far, from like comparing to like the other games, I was because like if I compare the Dance Central games to the Just Dance games, Just Dance is very casual, and well, Dance Central is hardcore. If I want to compare it, alright. So Dance Central is the Dark Souls of. I mean, does Dance game. Central make you rage? It doesn't. I mean, the dancing games doesn't usually make me rage. It's just mostly me like, See, oh, I, I, know, I know, I know, I know my, now. I know what I messed up, like. So that's not Dark Souls. Be, be, because like the the game will tell you if your if your do if your your limbs your, your limbs is in the wrong place. Like they if your your limb like your character will, will start to flash red on a specific part and you're missing. Like for example, if your right arm is in the wrong spot, their their character's right arm will start to. Uh, Will start to highlight their limb, that right arm, to be red to show that you're 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 missing that part. Yeah. Okay. And also the the yeah, so... the, the, the the flash cards are also really helpful and like the cam like you know seeing where your character is, is is a lot clearer than compared to Just Dance where like it, because with Just Dance you can't you can't tell what you're doing wrong. It just tells you oh perfect good bad or you know, something like that. So yeah, yeah, that's kind of a problem we had last time as well. I yeah, because like, because of that, because like because when when I was watching, because like Ian Ian is, is like the tallest one out, out out of everyone, and when when he, when he was playing with the others, I was I was like wasn't sure if the if just dance was recognizing you properly. Yeah, it was just like, yo, you so bad at the game. I don't even see your head. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, man. You you're not on the screen, man. You're so bad at the game. Yeah, cause like uh, for I, I for the like context, that. um, I have um Just Dance 2018, and for the PS4, so but I also have the PS4 camera. So that's also like another body 
don't need a controller kind of dancing stuff. But yeah, it's not not it's not really good. Not not a connect because connect is more accurate. But it, uh, how can, is it? Nah, the connect the connect is way 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 more accurate than the camera. They should make um like for the HTC Vive um uh. uh just dance and put the you in, like, problem with that is the wires. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh, true. Right. Yeah. But you know, but the thing is, you know, I bet you in a few years they're gonna remove the wires and they're gonna do Bluetooth. Yeah, Bluetooth. eventually. But right now it's because like the, the the VR backpack, that's a thing. But it's a freaking backpack on you. That's gonna be hard to dance with. Oh, I guess so. So basically, what we're saying is uh, one out of ten, not. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I, I mean, if you don't want to wear the backpack, then you can always go and like put yourself in for professional dancing, real life. <laughs> yeah, or or just yeah, sign up for yeah. professional dancing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's pretty much my uh, dancing <laughs> dancing story, I guess. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, so, I should make a movie so about this. Yeah, I'll, I'll 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 make up st I'll make a step up movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you need to be in a new step up. Yeah, step up to the connect. Anyway, um, so I think I think now we can just go to the notes I have. Um. Oh yeah, notes. Yeah, because well, I mean, I, 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 we were following the notes, but like some, some like were different. But uh, I got like some few, few more notes since we got. I think we got more time. I think we was stopping around um, twenty minutes. Yeah, that's that's right. fair. So, uh, Jackbox Party Pack Five has been announced. Oh. Wow. So, uh, yeah, the Jack. Right, you can get it, and we can play. We can free boat. We can free boat. Uh yeah, Jetbox Party Pack Five. <laughs> um yeah, it's just <laughs> more, just more more fun fun games for the party. It kind of feels like with the Jetbox Party Pack yeah. games, we we like all the time with my friends. Like no matter no matter how many there are, we always end up playing Jetbox Party Pack. Like because I I have one, two, three, and four. I'm I know, I am definitely going to get this for my Switch. Like again, I have all them for the Switch because like. It's just, it's just such a good way to get everyone to play because you, you don't need a controller you just need, you just need inter you need internet connection and your phones and that's it yeah so it looks like one of them is going to be basically would you rather um one of them is rap battles rap strange rap. inventions to offer solutions to selection of problems defeat aliens Interesting. Yeah, so yeah, Jetbox Party f Power Pack Five. Not much else I can say about it because it's just Yo, uh, it's again it's just a lot, lot of like a sort assortment of games that's fun for the party. Well, depending on who you play with, it could be really, it could be really funny or just be really dumb, or both. But I, oh, I, I'm I incredibly I, rude. <laughs> Yeah. I remember that time when they gave us a prompt of three circles and we drew three Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Oh right, a joint one. Happen. Yeah, the the city town thing, and it just became yeah. Hitler. Yeah, it was just. Yeah, it was just three circles. <laughs> I tried to make it a toad, but in the end, the toad turned into a Hitler as well. <laughs> it, it, well it, I was talking about the Mario toad as well. Yeah. The Mario Toad? Yeah, I think. Yeah. I, I was trying to turn it into a Toad and the Toad turned into some sort of Toad hit. So. Hey, uh, you know like that... everything just developed. Every, everything it's that devolves into Hitler. It's Godwin's law. <laughs> it's the law. Everything must be Hitler in Jackbox Party Pack games. <laughs> yeah, it's Godwin's law. It's yeah. the real thing. Look it up. Because cause it, it's really funny when it comes to the Jackbox games. Like, for example, Quiplash. Or, or 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 survive the internet. Usually, when I'm playing uh, with my with my high school friends or my just their usual friends, you see my random moments of friends. 
uh, cast. Um, I I'm really bad playing with them, but when I'm playing with you guys at SCAD, I don't know how I keep winning. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just because we keep coming up with the. I think we're too tame. Yeah, because like. I think we're too tame. Because <laughs> like. Their 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 comedy is very like off the walls, like not PG at all. No, that was one time when we were your birthday party. We played. Yeah, yeah, because like, cause like I I I, I wanted to see how would this mix. <laughs> it went pretty well. And yeah, they, remember... again, my my friends are more insane. And <laughs> what was the question? The question was something like um. How do you know when someone's become a man or someone's grown up or something? I don't. Think oh I yeah, remember. Uh, uh, I remember that one was pretty. Wait, um, <laughs> wait, what's the what was the answer? One of them was aborting babies, <laughs> or something to that nature. How do you know that a boy has become a man? And yeah, one of them was. Um, I just don't remember, but I remember it was really. Oh, he's just it, it was, mute himself, it was but whatever. Pretty good. Wait, but, did he? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, oh. I have to, I think like the the TKO game, the draw, the T-shirt game. The what? Oh. Yeah. When yeah, we the, when we design oh. our own T-shirts and tagline. Um. But, oh, vaguely. Yeah, but I I remember um, it. Was, <laughs> I forgot what was the shirt that I won, but I I remember doing do it at the birthday party. Uh, Shinny, you guys remember Shinny? Um, yeah. And then yeah. we went and then the but I think one of the names was was just Shinny. <laughs> like just just oh, just, yeah. just name completely yeah. wrong. It just became him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just we just referred to him as Shinny as an inside joke, but. <laughs> We just, I don't know why, we, we were just all dying because of that. I don't know, it was so dumb. <laughs> like, it's so easy to come up with an inside joke with without trying in that. You yeah. just have to... Wasn't one of the shirts Waluigi? I thought someone drew Waluigi. I don't know if there was a Hitler joke, but I think there was a Hitler joke, there has to be a Hitler joke. I think there was a Waluigi joke because that was around the time when we realized Waluigi wasn't going to finish. I don't think it was that early. Yeah, I don't think, I don't it was think Smash had been announced yet. Yeah, I think that was. I think that's true. That was pre E3. Yeah. Oh wait, I drew a toad again. I drew a yeah, toad. Yeah, I think it has a toad. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think I said tr try not to draw any genitalia, and genitalia was still drew. Yeah, everyone. <laughs> yep. Yep. There was a lot of genitalia, just despite explicit. Instructions to the contrary. Yeah, because... Exactly. This is why you can't regulate games. As soon as you say no games, <laughs> everyone's gonna be. As soon as you say, exactly. you say no penises, then everyone's just gonna show up. No, because like, the reason exactly. why the reason why I I I said that because like again, it's just it's too easy, you know. Like it's I like it, I just want people to expand the creativity and just like. Yeah, sure, a dick joke. It just kind of feels like a like a cheap way to get laughs. Yeah, there there was quite yeah, a lot of Despacito though. Oh my god, Despacito! Oh, oh my what? god, <laughs> completely forgot oh about that. So dumb. No, because like I think like when playing playing with my friends, I think like another like session we had playing Jackbox until you know, so, a lot of Despacito jokes. So dumb. <laughs> Unity is cancer. Yes. <laughs> but it's our friends. It's fine. <laughs> it's better us. people to hang out with. <laughs> it's us though. <laughs> anyway, um try for another another thing in my notes. Uh I got Soul Caliber six. Do you, are you guys familiar oh. with the Soul Caliber franchise? Wait. Is it is it already released? No, I, I I'm it's uh, it's gonna be released October nineteenth. Oh, so you pre-ordered it? No, no, I, I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just oh. saying. It's, I, as it's on my notes. Yeah, I'm, that I'm doesn't mean I'm it. buying it. Well, I mean, I am gonna buy gonna... it. But I don't know what. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna get Soul Calibur six because um, 
like it's one of the fighting games that I actually am able to play because uh, the inputs aren't that difficult and it's more about spacing and timing. Yeah, yeah. It's like fencing because of the, of the weapons. Yeah, and then there's also the uh, character customization part. Oh yeah, that yeah. That, that that's always the selling part of the Soul Calibur games, the customization. And and um, the the story is going to be more focused for your player character, this time. Oh sweet! And you you and you and you can choose your race of your character as well. Race. So so, so like the lizard men and then like the, um. It- like robots. You can be a furry. God damn it. <laughs> oh my god. Um, and um, it's like the robots, <laughs> a skeleton, and so on. So it's like a bunch, a bunch of like uh, silly stuff. Like it does because Soul Calibur games are do not take themselves so seriously, and they know it because of the customizations and stuff. So you can go crazy at what what you want to do. But um, uh. I got surprised that that uh, Witcher's Geralt is in it. Oh, Geralt. Is he? No, Soul Calibur has always done all these. Yeah, always crossovers. on the crazy cross crossovers. Link was in. Yeah, Link. Link. Uh, Soul uh, was it two or four? Wait, what? Three? Was, was it Soul two Calibur? or three or four? Like one of the maybe it was three because it's still GameCube. Era. It, yeah, it and was then... it was the GameCube era. So yeah, GameCube got Link, Xbox original got yeah, Spawn, and. Then... and um, PlayStation got uh, Darth Vader and Yoda. So yes. Was it Darth Vader and Yoda? Yeah, okay. I remember. Yeah, I but know. yeah, so they always do these crazy crossovers. So I don't really mind that Geralt is there. I mean, I was like, so was, like pleasantly surprised because you know it's it's Witcher being such a a Western kind of like. Witcher is such a good game. Witcher three. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I would, I would... Hmm. You guys never played it. I, I had, I... but I haven't played it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's on my I... list. I have the whole trilogy just sitting there waiting to be installed. Same. Witcher Same. 3 I mean... is an amazing game, and you guys need to play it. Yeah, like, I'll get to it. <laughs> Ian, you, like, you keep on saying like you like games with like spacing and timing. It's pretty much all spacing and timing. It's all, you know, like... The fighting style is a lot like uh, Dark Souls, where it's dodging and it's attacking. Pretty much it. And uh, but the, the the story is really good. That's and the atmosphere is really good. Uh, that's why I like it. The thing is, I I kind of need the customer character. Uh, Character customization. Oh right, e- Ian's taste in RPGs yeah. that you need to have a custom yeah, and... custom character to play. Yeah, and yeah. it's just that Geralt, Geralt. I I I don't hate Geralt, but I I I want to customize him. And yeah, yeah. He, that... yeah. Like he he is a kind of a of a bitch sometimes. <laughs> like, um, but like you do, he does grow on you, and like you might not like him. But you, you, you kind of do grow to like the other characters which okay. you play with. Yeah, so, I, it's one uh, of the games that I've just been afraid to try because, like, first there's the time investment issue, and then there's the issue with uh, I don't know if I'll like Geralt enough to continue playing. So well, yeah. That's it. Well, I, I, I really do want to play the game until my my younger brother pretty much forced me to sit there and play, it. <laughs> and then like. Over time, I was like, actually, there is a reason why this got Game of the Year. Like, this, there is a reason why this game got so many awards and like was so good. And I, I honestly do think it's really good game. Also, I want you... to play from one to three. So, and uh, one... I, I never played the originals. So. Okay. So, and one and two are kind of old, so they didn't. Like, graphics-wise, they don't... Well, one, at least. One looks kind of bad. In oh, terms hell. of character. It's date. And, uh... Yeah, so... I'm not sure if... I want to go through the whole trilogy of that, if I just want to play three. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm doing the same thing too. Like, cause like, I have two, and I feel like I want to complete two, and then go on to three. But I haven't I had the time to do that. And I still the haven't story. played any of them. Yeah. Story is completely like you don't need to know the story. I mean, you could watch probably a quick YouTube video if you're really like, um, if you really want to know like the full story between it. But like. The story is completely different in the third one, and okay. you don't need to play the other two, really. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is is isn't the story revolve around collecting cards for Gwent? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's the game, right? I hate the game Gwent. I hated it. Um, <laughs> and I, 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 every single time I saw the Gwent thing, I'd be like, oh no, <laughs> not doing that. And now it's and now its own game. And now it's its own game, which yeah. is crazy. Speaking about like really nice games, though, have you spoken about um, the new Ori and the Blind Forest? Oh, geez, we're doing really uh, okay. Ori and the Will of the Wisp. I yeah, Ori and the I, Wisp. I hadn't kept an eye on it. I know there's an owl. It's, like, it's pretty looks, cool. That looks like a really good game. I, I didn't play the original, so uh, I was wondering if, if you guys played it. No, I've, I haven't played it, but I recently saw an interview where the guy was talking about a couple of features as added, and one of the things they did add it was a lot more sort of to the combat side of things. They've added to the mobility stuff as well, but they've got a far more robust like combat system with different like weapons you can pick from or something. And there's also now like a sort of competitive multiplayer element in that there's oh, sort of no! Oh no! no, no, no. <laughs> there's 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 sort of like Mario Kart style races from like point to point on the map and you oh, can see other people's blinking. ghosts and race yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. Still. I don't think you ever sort of uh, interact with other players, but there is this sort of like I'm faster than you. Time trial to it. Yeah, basically, exactly. I I I don't like competing. <laughs> you don't have to do like, the whole thing, obviously. Yeah. Uh, there's this. Speaking of like ghosts and shit, like uh, Neo has this nice feature where when a player dies and you're online, uh, they leave behind a blood stain, and in Dark Souls, the blood stain shows you how they died. Whereas yeah. instead in Neo, when you interact with a bloodstain, it is summon the player's ghost, and you have to duel the ghost. It's not controlled by the player, but it's an NPC ghost with the player's uh, equipment, basically. Huh. Yeah, that and then. Really interesting. Yeah, and if you kill the ghost, you can sometimes lose the gear. Oh. You don't lose the gear and you're safe, but if you if you die, but. Uh, like you can farm gear by killing player gold, and it's pretty interesting. So it's a good way to do safe scumming. No, not safe scumming. Yeah. Uh, what's that thing called? Uh, twinking. It's a good way to do twinking, but you have to make sure the dude you're twinking to can handle killing you. <laughs> the guy, the protagonist's and, name is William, right? Yeah. Uh, it's actually kind of based on. Uh, like the Westerners have just started to trade with Japan. Uh, uh, William is an Irish dude. Yeah, he's an Irish dude from England, right? You start in the Tower of London. Oh yeah. And yeah, and uh, other characters there are like uh, there's this Spanish lady called Maria who's married. Like historically, she's married to one of the daimyos. Yeah. So there are actually like foreigners at that period, and it's not that far off except for all the demons and. Because <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'll... that's historically accurate except for all the ghosts and demons. <laughs> what, are talk- what are you talking about? What are what are real? <laughs> but um, I, I always thought I always thought William was a bit like Gerald. Yeah. Um. You see, the thing about Neo that's 
uh, I was okay with not having customization is that you can uh, at a certain point in the game you can unlock other characters to play as they play exactly the same as Carol uh, as William wow I just said here uh, yeah they play exactly the same as the character except the skin changes uh oh so I see. there's a bit more variety like if I can play a Siri or uh, other protagonists yeah, yeah. in The Witcher. Oh, can you? Can you? Can, you can play a Siri. I mean, okay. you play a Siri. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you like why you play a Siri. I mean, yeah, you play a Siri, a Siri, um, in parts of the game. Okay, but that's not really a story. choice you're making, right? It's just certain it's story. It's not a choice. Whatever. It's a story missing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But but you I can think... probably install a mod that replaces Geralt's character with Siri. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. <laughs> you, but, you, uh, still hear the, you still hear the male voice. But like the customization, like you can <laughs> you can choose to upgrade different spells, for instance. I don't know. Oh, that's true. Like character I, growth I know. and character growth. Yeah. So I mean, it's not visually customizationable. Like. I mean, you can change hairstyles if that kind of makes, uh, makes a difference, or you can add like some nice glasses onto him. I don't know. <laughs> and and um, gear, you know, customizable yeah, gear okay. um, and armor. But other than that, yeah, you're stuck with his personality, which is like pretty emotionless. And but there's a reason why he is emotionless. Um, That's true. Like uh, emotionless characters are easier for you. To... No, but but it's also part of the story why he's emotionless because it's you know, he's, he's a witcher. Isn't it? He's a witcher, right? They yeah. don't have any emotion. Um, yeah, it's pretty it's much a typical uh, Batman. I'm Batman. Batman can't. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fantasy Batman. That's why I must be emo all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and like in the game you can choose whether to kind of do good or do bad right you can like it gives you a choice like what kind of Geralt you kind of want to be you do you want to be like the dick Geralt or do you kind of want to be like the kind girl because it is it's multiple choice as well you know that's true um, you see, that's why I'm really hyped for Cyberpunk. If, if you speak. play Witcher 3, you'll get an idea for what Cyberpunk will be like, sort of um, complexity-wise. Yeah, okay. Well, I you know what, I'll play Witcher 3 to tide me over until... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, um... But yeah, uh, oh, back back to back to what I was saying about Soul Calibur Six. <laughs> Before we do oh, right. it, wow. <laughs> uh, this is the reason why I'm always quiet just to let you guys finish. But uh, uh, Soul Calibur Six first time coming to the PC. Um, probably gonna. I don't know if I want to get it, but I. Sh but like, that that kind of game, I prefer to play on my computer instead. I guess. Yeah, like I I was looking at some of the like gameplay whatever on YouTube. It looks like a PS2 game, I'm sorry, but like, maybe it was a video I saw, but visually it's sort of, eh. Maybe you were looking There's at some kind of before desire. footage the whole time. I mean, I've never seen gameplay or, or heard of it, so I'm probably not very it's good. Just, it's a fighting game, that's to put it simple. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know you like all of the, the multi combat and the... You sound, you sound like an old man with your Mortal Kombat and your Street Fighters. <laughs> oh man. Because then you do like project, right? What? Your. Oh yeah, my. Um, yeah, your game. My 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 game idea pitch was well, a fighting yeah. game, but I don't think I'll, yeah, I don't think a long I'll, time ago. But... Yeah, I don't think I'll get into it right now because we don't have much time. Um. But yeah, um, but like the reason, the, re the reason why I talked about the dance central stuff, right? Because like when I was when I woke up sore 
oh my god like i, I felt, felt like i felt like, felt like my chest was like compressed for some reason and i couldn't feel my like for a moment like after like in the morning for a moment i couldn't I, like my leg um did like the thing where it felt numb for for a moment like like it felt like their the nerves were like numb for a moment and i had to like wait a while wait a while for it for it to get back and stuff i don't know if you guys have been into that situation <laughs> Well, like a knee. dead leg. Yeah, dead leg. Just, just, just uh, like, just like leg. waking up sore, or just like, just any physical harm like that. Um, yeah, I've woken up where I'm like, oh, it hurts to move. Why? Why do I live? I and mean, my I've been, I've been so bored this summer. I've been going to the gym every single other day, so wow. I've, <laughs> I'm in, I've, I'm in constant pain. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Do, 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 do you want do you, Nick? Do you want to talk about your injuries or something? Uh, I don't know. I, just, I think because I I try to go way too hard at the gym. I I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to snap out of the the skinny um, skinny skinny Nick. I'm trying. Yeah, because like because like the, yeah. Uh, I mean, the Gaming. reason why I, I like to I like to exercise. Well, I don't. I, I find exercise fun. I get I, I, I get the joy out of exercising, and also I want I want to try to gain some weight because I'm I'm very anorexic. I'm very oh, well, actually, speaking of gaining weight, my my younger brother, right? He's more of a sort of outdoorsy, sporty guy, and he's been told he needs to sort of bulk up. And one of the things he was told to do, I only just found out, sort of like six hours ago, he was told, oh, you're eating three meals a day, right? Yeah, you should be eating five. What? Wow. Yeah, that's apparently. Me, I eat, four, I eat five meals a day. <laughs> like, uh, not five yeah. full meals, I assume, like, but the whole idea is to tide over the time between big meals so that you're not, like, hungry. Yeah. So from the... The beginning of this tour, and till now, I've eaten, I've eaten one banana, um, a bowl of cereal, and four eggs. Oh Christ! I mean, at and, least you're having something in the morning. Well, no, yeah, well, it's now two o'clock in the afternoon, right? Oh I've yeah, you woke, got, you woke up I've at like eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because. I have to walk my dogs in the morning at like five o'clock oh. in the morning. Oh jeez. And I, you know, I go back to sleep. Oh yeah, of course, of course. I mean, yeah, I usually wake like when it's like a holiday. I always wake up like. Um, usually on a weekday, if my dad's going to work. I usually wake up at nine. That's usually because that's the time when my dad leaves and the door is very loud. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, one, one of the reasons I'm going to the gym now is because you know how, you know, SCAD is. You know, once we get in, well, once we go back into <laughs> class, I'm going to be sitting the chair for the next, yep. uh, for the next six months. So, <laughs> yep. Uh, you know, scoliosis, my back problems, punch, <laughs> you know, over the yeah, computer. We're, we're just going to be 80-year-old men by the time we're done with Oh yeah, yeah, I don't think it's very good for our backs, but I I fully expect to be able to walk into like an old people's home and be able to sympathise with everyone there. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, you also have this obscure <laughs> back issue. <laughs> oh yes, like, you, you like you need you need one of those like the walkers. <laughs> those walkers. I need one. Of, yeah, it's not, not even a walking stick, just the old man walker with the four legs. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's yeah. what I'm talking Shuffle. about. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah, my friends joke that like they they're going to like invest and buy me one of those uh, back braces to wear oh my God. during the day <laughs> to keep my back straight. But but Nick, I, I don't know. Nick, when um, I was like when I was, I was talking to my to my other friends the other day about like um your your foot injury <laughs> that you that you had before. Oh yes, oh yeah. No, uh, do, I, I, do, do, do you want to talk about that story? Because I, I don't think I don't think I got the details right. What? What? The broken toe. Uh yeah, I think, I think that one. The, the one where you 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 did a handstand, right? Oh yeah, okay. So my freshman year 
in um, college, there was a few people around in my apartment. I think it was, it was me and my roommates and around um, around four to five girls. And you know, when when the girls are in the room, you kind of have to step up and impress. So of course. I don't know what was going on. All of a sudden, I break into this. You know, oh, okay, we're doing a talent show. <laughs> so anyone got any talents? Everyone says, oh, no, no talents here. So um, I go, okay, we're going to do a handstand competition. And uh, no one does a handstand competition, so I'm the first one up. And I, I do the handstand, and I land, not joking, the perfect handstand. It was straight. It was for a good bike. For, uh, like five to ten seconds it was like i i've never even done a handstand in my life and it was just so good <laughs> and um but the thing is half the people were not even in the room they were like in my bedroom i haven't and i was like oh my god so they they all came back in the people that saw it were like oh my god that was amazing so everyone came back in and i'm like you know what i need to i need to step up and do the handstand again <laughs> And the second, the second try, I, I flipped over and really killed myself. I was like, and everyone was like, Nick, you know, you're going to hurt yourself. Stop. And then um, the third try I did, I did a nice, perfect handstand. And I'm coming down. I, I smash my foot on the table oh and break one of my toes. <laughs> um, so... When I broke my toe, it didn't really look broken, but something was, well, actually it did look broken. It felt like there was a rock in between my toes. Like, oh, I was, you know, and my, my toes were all kind of crooked. And everyone's like, Nick, you know, Nick, shut up, stop screaming. <laughs> you know, I don't know. So I, I, I lay down, and you know, in SCAD, everyone thinks that they're doctors, so they all, oh, I know what it is. Oh, well, I've had this problem. I know how to fix it, you know? So they were like, you know what we need to do is we need to snap it back in place. It's not broken. It's dislocated. And I was like, no, I think it's broken. So what they did was they, they pinned me to the bed, <laughs> and um, they started yanking at the broken toe <laughs> to try and you know, undislocate it, which just made it worse, I think. And yeah, pretty much that's the story. And then I went to the doctors the next day, and um, they said, "Yeah, your friends are idiots. You definitely <laughs> snapped it in half." <laughs> oh my god! Oh man! Because I know, yeah, I, I know you said that you you told these you tell these stories before. And I remember yeah. we, we told a story when we were having lunch and we were, we were just dying <laughs> when yeah, yeah. that was so, going on. I don't know if I've told you, I don't know if it's that story or if it's the one with the broken legs. Or the one where you jumped I'm, off. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was uh, a classic story <laughs> that gets passed around in um, every single, every single like family dinner, you know, where we're all sitting around the table. That story always gets brought up. Oh, do you remember the time Nick jumped off the, you know, the bridge? Yeah. I don't think it's very funny, but everyone thinks it's a pretty good story. I mean, because like I, when when uh, when Sam and Ian when we were having dinner, like uh, it was like us for like Tr Tristan, you know, the usual Black Rock Talk group. When we were having dinner, right, and when we were talking about. Uh, I think I think we mentioned you, and because like you were the example of like if you were if you were to tell him to ju to jump off a bridge, he would jump off of a bridge. <laughs> so yeah, so it was kind of like using was, you as an example. It was. It wasn't just to jump off the bridge. It was to prove that I am better than Bear Grylls. <laughs> you know, <laughs> see, everyone was like, Nick, Bear Grylls can't do it, and I said, I'm not. I'm not Bear Grylls. I'm better than Bear Grylls, <laughs> oh you know. But you know, I I broke both my legs in the in the meantime, so there is that. Oh my god! Because I I think I think like you mentioned like your family was there, right? 
and oh it, yeah my my family saw the whole thing my mum told me if I do it right she would disown me <laughs> and be extremely pissed off so I did it anyways <laughs> when she went to the restroom and uh, my dad chilling by the pool and just saw me climbing over the rails of a bridge <laughs> thought I was committing suicide <laughs> jumping off <laughs> and everyone when I jumped all I could hear was just no you know like <laughs> screaming from my dad from half the way over the, the resort <laughs> yeah. but then oh when I when I landed when I landed it was it was it was a surreal moment when I was flying through the air I was like oh my god this is actually a long way down <laughs> This is not what I expected, and I'm flying to. Yeah, I can. I can still feel the feeling of flying through the air and landing to this day. <laughs> oh wow! Mm, you even scared the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Don't die, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. And um, yeah, basically. Sorry, my dogs. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> getting all excited. You're scaring them by jumping off the bridge, man. Um, <laughs> basically, um, when I landed, I thought everything was perfectly fine. And my friends were there as well, and they were hyping me up so so much. They were they were like, "Oh my god, you did it!" They were laughing and everything. And then I saw, it, <laughs> I saw my mum. I saw my mum coming out. What's happened? You know, I'm crying on the floor, you know. And then my mum just, I can just remember the moment. She's, I hope you're hurt, you know. <laughs> I've just broken both my legs. <laughs> oh, I got such, I got such a, a brutal, um, just a brutal day. Of I can remember because we were in the middle of Italy when it happened. So no one spoke English. You know, we were driving hours to a hospital, and just the whole entire car journey was just screaming at me. You know, idiot. You know, <laughs> in my mind, I thought I was pretty, pretty cool. You know, <laughs> I just jumped up a bridge. <laughs> you know, better than Bear Grylls. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> you, you, you achieved your goal. In one way or another. <laughs> yeah. So so now my my friends won't ever test me on anything again because they know they know I'll come through. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, because <laughs> I I just I just love how your your family is so is so British. And I think they kind of respond. Uh, yeah, it's like um. You do something extremely stupid and you're really hurt, right? Normally they'll be, oh my god, are you alright? No, this is my my family. Uh, oh my god, you know you're going to be hearing about this. The next, you're grounded. You know, <laughs> so you're an idiot. <laughs> because we were on we were on vacation as well, and where we were living, we were living in this villa in Italy, where everything was on a hill, <laughs> and nothing was flat so the whole entire time i would have to be wheeled around in a wheelchair or i would have to be in my my all fours because even i couldn't I couldn't crawl you know i couldn't stand so i'd have to be like dragging myself across the floor with my hands if i if i wanted to get anywhere uh, i think it ruined the the vacation for me because you know I don't know, because we, yeah, the, the doctors, we spent hours at the, the hospital and hours and hours x-rays and then they finally came out and said, okay, here is some um, aspirin and painkillers and that's it. <laughs> that's it. And we were, but you're broken and we were like, And we'd be, um, we were like, what? We've broken, I've broken both my legs. No, that would take away the pain. We're like, no, 
now we've just been here for seven hours. Uh, <laughs> they didn't do anything about it. So we basically had to wait until I went back to England and get it checked out again. And yeah, that's the story. Man. <laughs> then you like go to a museum and had wheelchair access though. Yeah, that was the best part because, you know, being, being an art student, I love going to all the museums and, and Italy and Flo we were in Florence at the time. So it was like the best art museum that you can get. And everyone's like, oh, God. Ooh. <laughs> everyone's like, oh, God. Um, I want to see the birth of Venus. Everyone's pushing and shoving. And then you just see some cripple coming along you know, in the wheelchair. And it's like part, it's like part of the, you know, the Dead Sea. Everyone's splitting, and I'm coming in with a wheelchair. You know, looking at the birth of Venus, front row access. It was, it was the best thing. You know, that, totally, that was totally the only worth thing it. Made, made the vacation. Yeah. And also getting on the plane as well. You know, they had to like carry me onto the plane, which was pretty cool. You feel, you felt like a king. Yeah, I, I, I felt like a, a crippled like, king. Like a cripple. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. They were probably looking at me like, what the hell is wrong with that kid? Yeah. <laughs> man. Man. I feel like, I feel like my, like, I, I, I do have an injury story, but it was, it was, I, I never broke, I never broke in a limb before. But, uh, this, 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 yeah. So, but I know this is not a story where I broke a limb, but it was just more like an ow that freaking hurt kind of story. And um, so uh, it it was um, during high school in P uh, PE, and um, we, we were doing a, a an activity where uh, so um, some some people some people were like the taggers, and so so too much to go was to get to get to the other side of the court to to like run. To not, get, to not get caught by the taggers and um well d during doing a run yeah i said got caught i got close i got caught i think by a clothesline of some sort i don't, I don't know i felt like a clothesline Ooh. and um I, I don't i don't i don't know if i, if I did like a whole flip <laughs> or or i fell back first but i certainly it felt like a flip like i did like a whole rotation and then fell and, and then fell on my Head or face, and um, did you like bruise yourself? What? Uh, no. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty much like I got, I got, I got like I just uh, you know try to try to push myself up. I'm like say I'm like <laughs> I'm like uh, I feel like, I feel like I felt like I got a concussion. <laughs> I think, and um, I was like saying oh god because I because like, like my nose was bleeding, so I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like see I'm like I'm like looking at I'm like looking at the ground. I'm seeing like blood drip down. I'm I'm, just, I'm I I just repeatedly say oh god, and I, I say I keep saying oh god oh god oh god oh god repeat it. And I hear my I hear like my my other class and friends are like are like giggling in the back in the background because I keep I, I kept on saying oh god because I didn't really know how to I didn't really know how to like respond to the situation because <laughs> like everything was like like was like ringing. I'm seeing blood from my nose dripping down I don't know I don't know if like if this is a really bad injury or not but then I you know I, I'll take into take into the nurse to check it off you know I'm, I'm like fine it wasn't it wasn't a serious injury I just got like a bloody nose that's it but like um when I woke up the next day I got like my my head had like a like you new know, like the cartoon kind of bump on your head my head was kind of swollen it was like swollen a bit <laughs> so I was like huh I, I like felt it it was like oh that's a uh, that's a bump. That's actually a swollen bump right now. But yeah, that's that. It got it got better eventually. But I I, I told I told like I told the girl um who who hit me with a close line. I, I know it wasn't I know it wasn't attentional. But she was like a like she was like so she she felt so guilty and then she was like so sorry on under on Facebook and and I told her it's fine like. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not seriously injured, but I did tell her I got, I, got, I did tell her I have a bump right now on my head. <laughs> she, I think she kind of freaked out from my dad, but, but yeah, that's that's pretty much my injury story. That's that went to that kind of length. Not, not a broken limb, but my worst injury, I guess. 
I mean, my worst I'll, I'll injury that. story. Yeah. Uh, so when I was in primary school, I was a pretty stupid boy. And okay. I decided, well... I feel like a lot of us were. Um, yeah, so I decided uh, if I rode a wheelie chair down a flight of stairs, I could probably emulate what I see in uh, movies where they ride a sled out the house. Yes. And, uh, of course, I didn't take into account that the wheels would get... The, the chair would start rolling, right? And I would somehow end up under the chair. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of exactly what happened. I was like, hmm, let me think this through. If I roll down with the chair onto the stairs, what are the chances I don't get hurt? Pretty slim, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And I just wheeled down the flight of stairs and pretty much uh, exactly what I thought was going to happen happened. It was the chair immediately flipped over and it landed right on me as I, sl uh, as I slid down the stairs on my back. Ouch. Yeah. But it wasn't that bad. Like, uh, I kind of expected it, so I kind of braced for it. So. It didn't hurt too much. So you, you didn't really get anything serious, you could, but you, did, did you get any bruises? I don't think so. If I did, then I couldn't see it because it was all on my back. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the thing that, like, it's just this sliver of hope that perhaps the chair won't flip over and it probably <laughs> won't land on my head and I probably won't die that constant <laughs> got me into doing it. And it wasn't the brightest idea I had, even though I pretty much expected all the consequences. Yeah. And that's the only time I've actually been in a notable injury, because even that time, I, it wasn't even serious. I just got back up and put the chair away, and then I was... <laughs> yeah. no, nothing happened. Yeah. It's, it, it was... It felt like more of a stupidity injury. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, at the time I did it because none of my brothers were home, and I was pretty much home alone except for the helper who's cleaning the house. Oh yeah. And so the helper came up and was like, "What just happened?" I'm like, "Uh, nothing. I just rolled down." <laughs> I rolled down. I mean, have you guys never got into any fights? Uh, no. Not real fights, not for me. My no. brother. I mean, sure, my brother punched me, but that's not big. <laughs> like, it's not, not like a fight fight. Not, yeah, not, a, not when, a real fight. Yeah, when uh, I used to get pushed overboard by my brothers, right? And instead of fighting back because I was. Like, I'm five years younger than my uh, other brothers. And so I would sneeze on my hand. And I would threaten to press all the sneeze, all the snoot onto their clothes. <laughs> That's how I would get away from them bothering me. That's against the Geneva Convention, though. <laughs> yes, oh, it was. Now the blink of it. But yeah, no. How about you? What's yours? I I I don't think I've ever injured myself in a way that I can honestly remember. The only the only time I ever came close is um, we went to a skiing trip in Japan, right? Oh, that's so it. The yeah, first time... skiing is always. <laughs> exactly. This didn't end particularly badly for me. So this is the first time any of us have skied. So we've got like a guide taking us down some of the easier routes or whatever. And so we we get to the top of this one route. We start going down, and it's like a not very popular route I guess so there's a lot of fresh snow everywhere and I've sort of skied through a few patches of it I'm like it's so nice because the normal snow is so hard and compact the fresh yeah. snow feels like you're skiing on nothing it's great so I, yeah. I, I take a small detour to go through this huge patch of yeah, like, and that... untouched snow and the next thing I know I'm like twisting through the air because one of my skis like <laughs> sunk through the snow and got caught oh, no. and so 
I, I end up like falling over and then rolling a good, oh, I don't know, like 10, 15 feet. And so when I sort of get my bearings, I sort of look around, not, no major injuries, just kind of like, ow, that hurts slightly. Good thing the snow was soft, right? Yep. And, and then I noticed that on my feet, I have a ski on my left boot and nothing on my right boot. <laughs> so at this point, I'm contemplating like, okay, so snowboarding is a thing, right? So can I do it on a ski? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but <laughs> if only, you no, know, the guy came over and was like, you idiot, don't do that and then we spend the next like 15 yeah don't detail don't go through thick snow you will just fall flat on your face um then you spend the next like 15 20 minutes trying to dig through all of that snow to find my ski it was like basically took off one of his own skis and started sort of digging his like long trenches trying to just basically hit my ski by chance and I do not remember how. Oh God, how deep was it? It got found, but eventually it was a good, like you know, two, three feet. So we just sort of we couldn't just look for it. Eventually, we did manage to find my ski and made it to the bottom of the slope without issue. Um, but yeah, that's that's the one story I've got. Yeah, I have a similar story without snowboarding actually, and I skid off track, and. Uh, so what happened, right? Uh, I, I, it was my first time actually going onto a real skiing track, and that was a green track. So they say it's green, right? Yeah. That place is like, it's not for be- it's not for beginners. Like it's not, <laughs> it's not really a deep slide. It's not very uh, what you call it? Like, it's not very steep. But it's way too flat. That's the problem, right? So yeah. they have this really uh, not too steep slope that goes down, and uh, my instinct was to snake, snake down and keep my speed at a pretty manageable uh, speed, right? So turns out the speed I was going at was too slow to go through the flat. And I had to drudge through basically 200 meters of flat snow to go to the next slide. And the next slide was almost vertical. (laughs) And I was like, so there must be a flat down there as well, right? So I just said, all right, I'll, I'll go faster this time. Lost control. And right at the end of the, that slope, sharp turn left okay <laughs> couldn't make the turn uh, straight out shot out of the track thankfully like it wasn't that much of a higher like what it normally is down there is a river so that's why it's uh, it's not part of the track because it's on top of the river so I landed in the river on basically on top of the snow that's on top of the ice and I was trying to find a footing the snow was as deep as my chest <laughs> yeah. thankfully my brother was with there with me right and then he's like yo what happened and then he's like and I'm like yeah I'm trying to get a f- like the snow was to my chest and uh, there are like branches underneath my feet so I can't really Drudge my way out, and then he was like, "Yo, you know what? Uh, why don't you keep walking down, and I'll try, and uh, and we'll try to find a place with a softer slope, and we can, uh, you can drudge out there." And then I try to walk down, and I realize I can't reach the bottom with my feet because uh, I've just reached the part of the river that's still flowing, so it's not mel- it's not frozen. Oh. So I can't actually make my way a bit more downhill because if I make my way further downhill, I would be walking in the river. So. <laughs> <laughs> wait, yeah. wait. So the the river wasn't like frozen or anything? Yeah, like uh, it's fro- most of it is frozen. That there's a bit of a stream going, 
But uh, I've reached the stream at the park. So I was like, yo, uh, why don't you just go first? I'm gonna take a while and <laughs> contemplate how to get out of here. <laughs> and then he's like, like, dude, what are you talking about? And then um, I'm like, yeah, I, I can't find a way to, I can't get a footing and I can't press myself up because the snow is too soft. Like every time I try to press myself up, the I just keep digging down. <laughs> And I can't grab onto anything because the closest tree is out of reach. In the end, what happened was uh, I I placed my snowboard onto the snow, and thankfully it it had enough surface area to not sink. Yeah. And we found a place where uh, my brother can just about reach my snowboard, and he pulled on it, and then I like shov shoveled my way up uh, so that I was laying flat on the snow and then wormed my way out, and that's how I got <laughs> out. It took a good 30 minutes, I think. Jeez. Oh, damn. Wow. <laughs> like, I no remember... serious injuries, just like, stuck there for 30 minutes. <laughs> I, I love skiing, and like, I think it's probably one of my, it's probably the most, my favorite thing to do out of anything. And um, I used to go skiing every single time in um in France every single year with my with my parents with, with, just with my dad and my brothers and my dad liked to go off by himself so we used to basically book us um with this ski school every single year and it's it was such a pain because you had to like follow in a line you know as the <laughs> one ski instructor like right at the front so all you wanted to do was just go off and like detour. So me and my, my friends would be like so like naughty and we used to like get ourselves in such trouble by like detouring through through the thick bits of the snow. And like that used to get us into a lot of trouble. And then like we used to always have like the last day of skiing, I used to go with my parents, with, with my dad. And um, he used to take us. And uh, I thought, oh, because I'm not in class now, I can probably detour more. And I found myself going into this um, skiing, like, skate park. I don't know if you've seen one or not. Right. With ramps and things. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like and I start picking up screw. I didn't really know what it was. So I started picking up speed. And all of a sudden, the end of the the end of the slope is a huge ramp so <laughs> i fly off this ramp. Oh, no. air <laughs> like, again like a bird and the thing is my dad also is like following me like where are you going right he's flying as well um, and <laughs> I, like, when i landed it was like such a hard land that both of my skis are just like, you know, flying <laughs> off, you know, and yeah, but the thing is, the, the fun bit about it is because it's snow, you don't really hurt yourself that much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that was like, but now I love it. Now I, I always go to the skate, <laughs> skate ramps and stuff because that, that's the best bit. Yeah. You know? it's, it's the bit with the danger, and, you know, that's the, you know, I like danger. Yeah, I, I I remember like um when I was when I was young um I, we had bikes right we used to have bikes me and my brother used to have bikes and uh, we uh so like uh, around like where we live there's like a, there's like a seaside area but it's like a it's like a really like open space where you can like you know bicycle around and stuff but there's like there's like a big slope. That so it was like there's like there's like a big slope that we can like go down and like do 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 just like go really fast and stuff. But the thing is, uh, we were wearing like full full gear of like protective gear, right? So because of that, I was crazy enough to like intentionally run into a to to go down the slope and intentionally hit the wall. What? <laughs> but yeah, so. I went down the slope and go really fast, aim towards uh 
uh it's not 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 necessarily just like a whole wall it's like one of those like walls for those trees but it's like a very big wall it's still like a very tall wall but i just pretty much i hit i ram <laughs> i pretty much intentionally hit directly into it i crap fall onto the ground and i just laugh because like i wasn't injured i was completely fine <laughs> because like again it's the, like very like a helmet a shoulder pads every, just everything just whole protective gear and just like hey, i can just do i can just be just be a complete dumb stunt man just do these do these dominant dumb, dumb, dumb stunts that's what i did <laughs> But uh, I think I think I think later a police might got got like what, what are you doing and you know what are you doing and kind of like you know don't, don't do this <laughs> kind of kind of like thing. But yeah, because like we we were really very little, so I think that's the reason why it was we got like the pass to do something stupid. Oh, uh, But yeah, when it comes to like when you, when you guys are talking about skiing, I have no experience with snow. I never seen like seen or touched snow in person, so I don't know how I don't know. About it. That's a great experience to actually be snowboarding or skiing, cause like surprisingly, it's not really cold when you're up there. No, it's it's really not. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually it's a very pleasant. Yeah, it's a very pleasant coolness when the when the cold air hits your face for some reason. <laughs> and you're like, and, you always uh, like on such a like. You get skin jacket. You've got like thermals yeah. on. Yeah, maybe place, that's like, why. Got inside, right? <laughs> I'm just wanting to take it off, and it it it's just amazing. Yeah, Have and you, then I mean, like you can go at this really high speed without putting in a lot of effort. Yeah. And uh, when you get the hang of controlling your your skates or your board, then it starts feeling like uh, it's like floating. Almost. Yeah, and then you feel so, like, and then you look at other people falling over, and you think, yeah, no, look at me, I'm professional. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's and true. Like, oh, when you hit the end of the slope, and then you just do a uh, break, and then uh, when it doesn't break enough, and you do a spin and half spin, and then you break the other way, and then you're like, yo, I'm looking so cool right now. <laughs> So I guess on you... skis, the version would be you come to a stop and you spray powder all over some guy. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> no, that's brother used that's... to do that to each <laughs> when... other. When you go up the hills, do you go on like the uh, the ski the ski lift chair, or like the one you sit down, or the one you put in between your legs? I've been on all yeah. three types, so uh, there. The gondolas where you actually sit inside, yeah. and you have to un you have to unpack everything, yeah. and uh, then there are the ones where you basically untag one foot, or if you're on skis, you don't untag at all, and you no. just wait for the rod to hit your bum. Yep. And uh, yeah. I haven't been I hadn't been on the ones where you have to like stand on. Oh wait, I did. Like um. Like, there are these ones where it's really just something for you to grab on, and you have uh, one foot that's kind of uh, uh, weight down, and then you have to hop off and uh, get pushed off. So those are the really short, but they go up really high. It's just one leg. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's like one leg where you get the support, and you have to yeah, hold so, onto it. So in France, there's there's three. There's the gondolas. There's the yeah. ones where you get uh, you sit down with someone else. You know, like yeah, yeah. Uh, the, it's the ski lift where you know it catches yeah, your, yeah, your yeah. grass, and then you sit down and you yeah, put yeah. the bar, <laughs> put the bar yeah. down, right? And yeah, then yeah, there's yeah, also yeah. the ones which. You've got it's like on the string, and it's like, and then you, it's like a round plate where you put it between your legs and you kind of sit on it. You don't really sit uh, on yeah, it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, what it's it the one. It drags you. It drags you up the hill, and you kind of, yeah. you're kind of skiing up the hill. They are the <laughs> funniest ones because those ones you kind of need to be taught how to get up the hill with. 
because it's it, when you put it in between your legs, you get pulled up this hill and you kind of lose, you know, you have to kind of like aim where you're going, right? Because you're skiing up the hill. And one like small, you know, like screw up and you're holding on for dear life, you're, you will fall off. Down the hill, you know, and they're, yeah, they're the funniest ones watching people, you know, watching the people that don't really know how to ski, uh, going on those lifts and watching them <laughs> fall. Like, it is, it's the funniest thing. There's, there's like a lot of videos online of people trying to go up, go up the hill with those, with that ski lift. Yeah, it's I. Really funny. <laughs> I've seen those, but I haven't been on those because those usually go out to uh, black. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not good enough to go up there. So it's only my brother that, like, uh, that's one of the, that that's the one I meant. I didn't get on them, so I didn't know how they work. But I, I remember when I first ever went skiing, it wasn't yeah. even on uh on ice. I went to a, a dry ski slope in in England. Oh, oh wow. wow. Right, because you know, there, sense, is no, yeah. there is no you know, <laughs> ice in England, and it's completely um, like kind of like plasticky. I don't really know how to explain it. And um, I remember the only way to get up was on the side because it's indoors on the side of the building, there is that lift, and I could never get it, I could never get up the hill, <laughs> I could only get up halfway because I kept on falling off. <laughs> and I went to a birthday party and it was so embarrassing because everyone was going up to the hill to take pictures up there, you know, to, you know, you know, race down with your friends and I could never do it. So I would have to go up. I would have to go up on the ski slope with my friend's dad. Like I would stand right in front of him and we'd both go up together while he's like carrying me up the hill. Oh, it was, oh, oh. it was, That's it was so, so embarrassing. Yeah. Oh man, but yeah, I think with I think with that we should end it here because we're almost reaching three hours. Oh my God, it's been also it's been... we haven't we have diverged the way away from games again once again. I mean again like oh, the those. whole point of black the reason why it's called <laughs> Black Hawk Talk and nothing gaming no no really game now and there or something like that is is it simply a talk about friends talking about stuff. But just games. Yeah, we're, just... we're free from any obligations. Yeah, yeah. I, I just like saying we, games is just like a center point because we're, we're, we're a bunch of game developers anyway, so it's like a thing we're yeah. almost on about. Yeah. We play games, we like to talk about games, therefore, we mostly talk about games, but the show doesn't necessarily just talk about games all the time. So, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry if you, if for people who expect game talk all the time. Um, you should not be watching this podcast for this. Well, you wow. know. Wow, yeah. way, way to yeah. shove off potential <laughs> audience. Like this is no, not man, the way like... to make money. No, I don't I don't even make money in the I... first place. Awful. If you don't like games, then this is a this good is place. the right place. <laughs> <laughs> if if you want to hear a bunch of idiots butcher your favorite game series with half remembered facts. This is where you wanna be. Exactly. <laughs> okay, before we do, we're gonna I don't some more. Okay. Facts. okay. I always get them wrong all the time. <laughs> okay, oh, yes, yes. Right, let's, let's just finish this off. So thanks, thanks Nick for for waking up late yeah, and well, uh, joining joining <laughs> us. Because <laughs> <laughs> like we 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 we've been wanting Nick to to be in the talk. I think I think like since like the first episode, like. Um, uh, I, I think I think we so wanted to use this episode too. Injury stories. I remember, I remember, <laughs> I remember um, you talking about it in Hong Kong before before you even started. Yeah, I, I think, like, oh I think God, yeah, that, that was like the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Next think... time we should get Gage. Get what? Oh, get Gage! Oh Gage. yeah, we need Gage. Gage is in in Disney right now. He's having oh yeah, he's doing his internship thing. An amazing oh time. really? Yeah. 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 Well, next time oh, he's, I'll probably yeah, ask. He, he'll he'll definitely be there. Yeah, I'll probably ask him yeah. sometime. But yeah, Gage is also again another one of our classmates. Maybe we'll see him in the future in the talk. Who knows? But yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it for this Blackhawk talk. 
and we'll see you guys whenever we do this another time. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye. bye.